Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready, because this is going to be a power-packed transmission. The first Friday transmission of 2013. It is the fourth day of January 2013, and we're going to be live here for the next three hours, Lord willing. Uh, Gerald Salente hadn't been on in about, I don't know, three weeks, always informative. We're going to get his take on Sandy Hook, the economy, the fiscal cliff, uh, the government funding Al-Qaeda publicly in Libya and Syria, all of the craziness. Gerald Salente is on in the third hour. Larry Pratt popping in on short notice via cell phone will be uh, joining us to give us the latest on Dianne Feinstein's new bill that uh, has gun confiscation in it and is getting almost no attention. The Illinois bill uh, that only has today to pass, and they claim they're not going to try to pass it. They lost the votes they needed, but look out, that could be a uh, playing possum event. In fact, I've seen this more than once. They claim they're like 10 votes short. Uh, they had the votes they needed just two days ago. You shot it down. I've got to give Infowars.com uh, radio listeners uh, credit. I've got to give DrudgeReport.com credit. I've got to give the NRA credit <clears throat> and Governors of America and just all of you. We did a great job. They had the votes, and uh, they now are freaking out uh, that they couldn't ban them. I mean, it banned everything but bolt-action rifles, pump shotguns, pump rifles, uh, semi-autos, revolvers. They have the FOID cards in Illinois, so you're registered. Would have made you turn them in. That's why we don't want registration in the other states, because they always use them to try to confiscate, and everywhere else in the world are successful. That's why the new bill that Feinstein's introduced has shut down the gun shows, shut down being able to give your grandson a firearm, shut down being able to buy your dad a firearm. We all buy each other firearms, don't we? At least I know my dad's probably bought me four or five firearms in my life or more. I've bought him four or five firearms. Uh, the point is, is that give each other knives, bows, uh, hunting jackets. I mean, it's what men do. <laughs> uh, well, not anymore, according to these people. Uh, and uh, it just absolutely registers all other gun owners. You have to take guns you've already legally bought and go in like you're a criminal and be fingerprinted. Uh, that has been introduced. Uh, and it's hadn't shown up in thomas.loc.gov as of this morning, but they say they've introduced it. So we're going to be tracking that kind of like on um, Wednesday, they said they introduced the bill in the um, state house in Illinois, but we couldn't find it. And then it got defeated yesterday and now has popped up in the registry today. And it's exactly what the NRA said was in it uh, from their sources in the legislature that were able to get an advanced copy. So they're going to try to sneak bills in and pass them same day. They're going to try to keep you from seeing the bills. Uh, and they could try to attach this gun grab bill to debt ceiling increases. They could try to put it into defense spending. You name it. You name it. So we're facing a lot of big issues here, obviously. You know, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. Uh, but we are going to do a general article about Al Jazeera, Russia Today, BBC, Piers Morgan on CNN, all these foreign media outlets and foreign governments calling to take our guns and our free speech. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, RT, really, I saw a video today they did yesterday, really trying to defame me. And it was just so pathetic. That I don't even know if I'll respond to it. I mean, they know we have a bigger audience domestically than they do, so it's an attempt at that. But RT, the last eight months, uh, has really taken a turn towards authoritarianism uh, and is, uh, you know, shameful. But, I mean, I go on any media outlet. It's like they, they've still, here's Morgan's producers trying to get me to fly to New York. I told them no. No, I was flown to New York once to be on a television show, and it was canceled. Um, that's why I don't do that. I said, I'll do satellite. And they said, okay, we'll do satellite. And I'd like to be in studio with him. I just don't have the time or the energy, and I'm not going there to be chumped. I've been in the car more than 10 times driving to a satellite uplink when CNN has canceled it when I'm in the car, almost like it's a joke to, like, mess with me and, and waste my time. And they send a car to make sure you're going to be there. So you're driving in the car, got some guy chauffeuring you. It's just all ridiculous. But the point is, I'm going to go on CNN. It doesn't mean I agree with CNN. Uh, people say, why do you go on RT? Well, I mean, I go anywhere to get the truth out. It's my message that counts. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday, the fourth day of January 2013. I am your host, Alex Jones, the head of Gun Owners of America with the latest attacks uh, as we uh, track the defense of the Republic against the globalist. Uh, Larry Pratt will be popping in at the bottom of the hour. Gerald Salente in the third hour today. We will have open phones as well. Okay, where to begin? Uh, there is massive harassment going on. You've seen it in the media saying all gun owners helped kill children. You're, so, so you are child killers. Uh, you're also Klan members, and you're also racist, and you're also hateful. Uh, and Michael Moore, MSNBC, literally, you've seen it, dozens of places say white people are bad and guns are bad. So, so there's not, the only thing worse than white people is, is guns. And we had people calling in yesterday, one lady who said she was Hispanic, and she said the problem is white people. Uh, so the media, with their dumbed-down Obama heads, uh, is really having an effect. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense, saying white people are bad and they own guns, and let's get the white people and get their guns. With, with folks that have been indoctrinated into race-based lib uh, tyranny, libtard tyranny, as they call it, for them, it, you really are, guns are racist. Because you can't take responsibility for the gangbanger culture, people killing each other. It's got to be a white person's fault. And again, folks, we try to bring people together under liberty and under the Constitution, under family, under God, under private property. All the things that make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Uh, but the system really is pulling out all the stops uh, to demonize gun owners. Here's a headline out of NBC, and, and, and they report this like it's a good thing. Lawmakers propose publicizing gun owners' names. And you already saw uh, the newspaper in New York, the uh, Journal News, publish where they live and the guns they have by getting the records from the state where they make you register. Now, they know that causes people to be robbed. In fact, newspapers have done this for decades. They always get sued over it and stuff, but they hate gun owners so much that they terrorize you and say John Smith or Tom Hernandez uh, or Carol uh, Scott. I mean, these are random names I'm throwing out. <clears throat> they live at this address and they've got nine permits for guns and thieves go and rob them. Now, there haven't even been threats, but because of complaints by thousands of gun owners and threats of lawsuits, the newspaper has hired armed guards after publishing gun owners' address. And, of course, that came out days ago. What's amazing now is uh, in Connecticut and other states, the lawmakers are saying, let's give newspapers cover since they can't terrorize. I mean, Hitler did this. He would publish by law. Uh, under regulations, when, by, by 35, they started doing this. He got in in 33, where Jews lived and the businesses they had. So, oh, armed thugs, brown shirts, quasi-government, like TSA, could come and knock out your windows and burn down your business. And, you know, there's famous Nazi film reels of that for folks that deny it went on. They were very proud of it. And they'd come and paint the star on your business or throw, throw furniture through the windows. And, and then, you know, a year later, they said, for your safety, because everybody's beating you up and you can't pay your property tax. We want you to, uh, oh, yeah, Germany had property tax before we did as a feudal state, uh, going back to feudalism. They, you know, German, German slaves weren't, white slaves were not released until the 1860s. But the media never tells you about that because then it can't be a black-white thing over slavery. Germans were actual slaves in many areas. But... It wasn't even called Germany. It was Germania in, in general, Austrian Hungarian Empire, and it had 77 sub counties, what, 14 major districts. But you can go look up all that up for yourself. In fact, people won't believe it. You type year, the German serfs were free, the German slaves were freed. And, and it, it was from the 1840s through the 70s. I just said the 1860 because that was the main. And that was another reason over here people were saying, we got to free slaves here too. Uh, in Poland, they're freeing the slaves. In Germany, they're freeing the slaves. But I'm digressing, ladies and gentlemen. They can't terrorize gun owners properly, and so now they want to make it the law that you've got guns so people can rob you and so you can be hated like you're a sex offender. It's like publishing. In fact, they've said that. They've said, we want to publish your names like you're sex offenders. And there's a special report that Melissa Melton and Jakari Jackson are going to be uh, putting out uh, on the nightly news tonight, 
uh, for uh, InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock Central, uh, about a 15-minute report into all the mainstream news. Last week it was The Economist. Yesterday it was Vanity Fair, Huffington Post. Literally scores of major publications, the same talking point, repeal the Second Amendment. And so we're going to be going over that. Now, before they said the Second Amendment doesn't mean you have a right to own guns. Now they just say, you know what? You're right. We lied about that. You do have a right. We're going to repeal it. And they're not playing games. Now, here's the good news. Two days ago, the local, uh, and we've had them on many times, great patriots. We should get them back on. The Illinois Rifle Association, a subgroup of the NRA, but they're hard chargers. The main NRA could learn from them. They got the subsections of the bill from a legislator before it was introduced and were able to head it off at the pass because they, they had the votes. They had more of the votes than they needed, and it's now being reported on. I have the articles here. They're up at InfoWars.com. They had the votes, the local papers are reporting. And because of tens of thousands of phone calls and people going to the state house and visiting their legislatures, the Democrats caved in for now. Now, now they do, they could be playing possum. They've still got today in the legislative session to get that done, but here's Kurt Nemo's article that uh, links to the mainstream articles. Uh, Illinois Democrats lose bid to pass firearms confiscation bill. So some good news, because even in Chicagoland, uh, run by the, uh, you know, the Don, uh, Rahm Emanuel, and run by uh, the uh, you know, Obama gangster gang, they need that, because what they were proposing is what Feinstein is. Ban almost all guns, make you turn them in. That's in her bill. Talks about making you re-register, but also, or we may just do a forced buyback. It's right there. And the funding for it. But it's a footnote written by these lawyers. So they can, you know, first they'll do it with people that say they have criminal records or whatever to make it look reasonable, and then go after everybody. They're going to pick you off at checkpoints. I was talking to one of my law enforcement sources yesterday here in Texas, pretty high level. They were saying, no, exactly what you're saying is what we're being told. If it passes, we're just going to set up these statewide checkpoints they're now announcing and search everybody's cars. They call them gang task force checkpoints. They just search you. And, oh, uh, well, this is a semi-auto. Uh, well, it's federal law. And then they call the feds and they come and arrest you. I mean, we're talking paddy wagons of gun owners here. And you're like, well, I'll just bury my guns. Well, that kills the gun culture. They don't want you shooting. They don't want money going to the reloaders, going to the ammo producers. They want to freeze it out and then demonize it and hunt us down. That's why you don't just bury guns and get ready to shoot gun confiscators. If you do that, you're falling into the globalist hands. We don't want a civil war. The globalists want a civil war. They, they want police and military to be killed trying to confiscate our firearms. And remember, oh, Alex, you're a fear monger. They'll never try to get our guns. And I said, you watch. There's going to be mass shootings. There's going to be false flags. A month before Sandy Hook, I said, this is the season. Get ready. I'm seeing them roll out the propaganda now beforehand. Just like before Gulf of Tonkin in 63 and 64, they're like, we need to go ahead and put troops in. They already had tens of thousands of advisors. 6,000 already died from 60 to 64. You know, we need to go in. We need to go in. They were already building up the pretext to then stage the Gulf of Tonkin that never happened. Our ships were never attacked. That's now been declassified. And it's the same thing. Before 9-11, they're like, we're, we're going to be hit by terrorists, and when we are, give your rights up. And I was reading Rand Corporation public stuff where they said, soon we'll be hit by large terrorist attack. The PNAC documents with Dick Cheney were saying, you know, there's going to be a huge Pearl Harbor event. Pearl Harbor killed 3,000, 9-11 did. And they said this catalyzing event, whether, you know, real or manufactured, go read it. It's public, their own website. And they said down the road, we'll then use race-specific bioweapons. But we've got to get the media to legitimize their use. I mean, it's like, whoa. And I, I've got to give our own globalist uh, local paper, the Austin American Statesman, credit. They were the only national paper that I saw, you know, big paper in the country, that actually did an editorial a week after. This was back in uh, 2000 when the PNAC document came out saying, this is crazy. You know, former uh, Defense Secretary Dick Cheney, because he wasn't even vice president yet, this was in 2000, he says, use race weapons. I mean, folks, the stuff they write about, they think you're totally stupid. It's like, oh, Alex, don't fear monger about Dick Cheney and race weapons. I mean, it's, it's, he wrote it in the September 20th, 2000, Rebuilding America's Defenses. 
I mean, I just gave you the name of the paper, National Archives. You can pull it up in 10 seconds. Rebuilding America's Defenses, PNAC. And there's 25 authors total, but, but he is credited with that paper. I mean, it, it is a blueprint for 9-11. And you can say, oh, Alex, come on, the government didn't do 9-11. I didn't say the whole government. I said criminal elements, bare minimum, knew and let it happen. I mean, that's been confirmed. Just like the government ran al-Qaeda against the Russians and then against the Serbs, and then they ran al-Qaeda, uh, of course, uh, against us as the pretext to take our liberties, and now they're running them against Libya and Syria on record and giving them missiles and letting them kill people, and the media is saying it's a great, good, wonderful, wholesome thing. I mean, this is going on. Those things are real, whether you want to believe it or not. Yeah, there it is. Rebuilding America's defenses, strategy, forces, and resources for a new century. A report to the project, a new American century, September 2000. Yeah, the actual publishing date is September 20th. I mean, look, it's all there. They think you're stupid. We're going to have a big Pearl Harbor event and take everybody's rights. And then now who they admit the target of all the 9-11 stuff is? Gun owners, conservatives, returning veterans. Folks, here's an example of how we can have victory. The globalists order police all the time. Because the police have all been basically federalized for all intents and purposes, and all the big departments at least. To go out and do things like set up a checkpoint, randomly search everybody's vehicles, doesn't matter if the courts have ruled over and over again, it's totally unconstitutional. Serious felony crimes. They just exercise the power. Kind of like, I was talking to one of the crew members that after she had a baby, and she already said no to vaccines. She woke up with them jabbing a needle in her arm, giving her a vaccine. And then they say, oh, it's the law. There is no law. They just do what they want. They set the precedent and hide their actions in plain view. So more and more of the state police in Texas pull you over, put gloves on, pull you over for speeding, you name it, and shove their hands inside your body. And then we'll go to the next person. Because why not? They're already breaking the law. And the state police came out and defended it. Well, because no one bought it, they went, oh, okay, we'll suspend her with pay while there's a lawsuit. But the head of the DPS defended it. You know, first, her local commander defended it. I mean, these are crazy people. Crazy people. I'm not saying the average person in the state police is a crazy person, but I've lived in Texas my whole life, born here. State police were all, like, you know, really nice when I was a kid, a teenager, even the last, you know, 15 years ago, protesting things. They're different now, bugging their eyes out at you, coming over and saying, you can't film on the grounds of the Capitol, you know, just making it up and going, okay, go ahead and go ahead and arrest me. And then they go, I'm getting my commander. And then, well, and then a nice one walks over and goes, well, yeah, they're allowed to film. What's going on? We have that on tape with Aaron Dykes. Just, just they're, they're hiring goons. And they're going to phase out the good guys and the good women. And it's just, we're, it, and they're going to come and stick their hands in our bodies. I mean, and, and, and if you don't like it, they'll taser you or shoot you. They're crazy people because the globalist wants to dominate. But, but here's the good news. People got so upset that now the state police are like, well, we'll have to review this then. It's a power grab. And I'm telling you, if you let government just tell you what to do, in every case, they'll start saying, all right, show up on Saturdays to dig ditches. It's part of your compulsory national service. By the way, Rahm Emanuel, as White House Chief of Staff, it's in my film, Martial Law. It's in my film, um, Fall of the Republic, excuse me. You know, he says on C-SPAN and on other shows, he says, we're going to have compulsory national service. You're going to come out uh, a few months out of the year, and you're going to serve the government. And, and they've got all the proposals. You're going to dig ditches. But they're going to first collapse society and say, here's your government card with money. Here's your government housing. But you've got to go out and do work now. You've got to go out and pick up trash on the highway. And people are like, well, good, make welfare people work. You don't get it. They're, they're, they wear these red uniforms now, these red jackets uh, through AmeriCorps, FEMA Corps, all these different groups that we cover. You've seen the video where they're marching and, and, they're, and they're doing the dance going, you know, salute Obama. Obama's going to give us free health care. Obama's going to take over. Obama is our commander. And you're like, well, those are people are, you know, a bunch of dumbed down goons. So what? Doesn't matter, folks. A wall of those people, just like the Soviet Union, will overrun you. And they've got the Boy Scouts training for gun confiscation, all of this. I mean, this is freakazoid level. But see, I'm here pointing out this is all freakazoid. They're like, come on, don't fear monger. So Texas is announcing statewide checkpoints to see if you're a gang member. 
they, they set up a, che a checkpoint on the highway, pull you out of your car, photograph you, search your vehicle without a warrant. I mean, come on, that, that, that's not a big deal. First, it was, Alex, you're a fear monger that checkpoints are coming to search everybody. Then they come with TSA checkpoints as well. They're like, okay, well, you're a fear monger not liking it. <clears throat> oh, you're a fear monger, Alex. Nobody's ever going to come for our guys. Nobody's going to try to physically make you turn them in. Now they've got the bills introduced all over the place. All right, well, you're a fear monger not want to turn them in. You don't need those guns. Hey, uh, here's the New York Times calling for world government to global carbon tax. Well, you're a fear monger not liking that. I thought I was a fear monger. It didn't exist. No, you're a fear monger. It's a good thing. Hey, I don't like foreign media, British, Russian, Chinese, now on U.S. cable systems, to saying turn our guns in and get rid of free speech and stuff. They're like, oh, shut up. What's wrong with having foreign media tell you to turn your guns in? That's normal. Even USA Today, and Paul Watson's doing an article on this, came out yesterday and said, what's with Al Jazeera saying turn our guns in? What's with uh, Ru Russian TV saying turn our guns in? I mean, every show now. And then, see, I don't like it. And so the Russian TV comes out and says, Alex Jones just in it for money, and he's a fear monger. Those are quotes. What, I mean, I don't get my money from Putin, so I'm bad? I get my money from you that buy our good products? See, we're bad for being Americans, and, and, and we're like sex offenders. You know, our names get published in the newspaper. And I'm like, hey, this is really dangerous. People are getting robbed and stuff. Shut up, fearmonger. So we're saying you're a Klan member because you own guns. We're going to publish your name in the newspaper. We're going to make you turn your guns in. And we're setting up checkpoints to take them. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live. Coming up in the third hour, always informative. He had been on this in about three weeks. A lot to cover on the economy. Sandy Hook, the police state. Gerald Salente of Trends Research will be joining us. We're going to have open phones in the second hour and a ton of geopolitical and economic news. Joining us for the next 20 minutes or so is Larry Pratt, Executive Director of Gun Owners of America, gunowners.org. And if it wasn't for Larry Pratt and Gun Owners of America and the members, we would have already lost the Second Amendment. And if it wasn't for them, the NRA wouldn't have been kept honest. The NRA is better than they were 10 years ago. Uh, but Larry has been forced before to point out they were founded by the federal government after the Civil War and actually supported the 68 Gun Control Act. But keeping our gun lobbies honest, never had to do that with Gun Owners of America, perfect record. Keeping the other groups honest is key, key to not let Benedict Arnold's uh, sneak in. We've had some big victories in Illinois. They can still sneak it back in today, but it is a big victory. They had the votes two days ago, but gun owners physically went there to their offices and called by the tens of thousands as local uh, Chicago and other uh, newspapers report. Those stories are all up at Infowars.com. But here's some of the news. Connecticut town to burn violent video games. Um, that's a little too much like book burning, but how about you just don't let your kids play them? Uh, lawmaker proposes publicizing gun owners' names. That's trying to terrorize us. That's the kind of stuff Hitler did. Uh, Illinois Dems pull measure to ban weapons. Not enough votes. Uh, Marine warns Feinstein, I will not be disarmed. I've said publicly, I'm just not turning them in. Not registering, it's my line in the sand, done. Homeland Security buys another 200,000 hollow point bullets on top of the 1.6 billion they've bought in the last 14 months. And we that's now over 12 times any previous one year purchase. Uh, and it just goes on and on. That's all up at drudgereport.com. We've got uh, reports up at Infowars. Dot com as well uh, that I'll go over uh, once uh, Larry leaves us here uh, at the end of the hour. But DHS buys 200,000 more rounds of ammunition, more people killed with hammers and clubs than rifles. This is all info weapons. It's all truth. Ram it down the enemy's throat. Put it out on Facebook, Twitter, email, local talk radio. Don't stop. We can use their attack to actually have a counteroffensive and may actually route the gun grabbers uh, to a great extent and, and shut the door on them. Won't be the first time in history a major offensive turns into a route against an enemy. Democide, how many people will government kill this year? Has an incredible video we produced giving the history of government killing 290 plus million, I kept saying 260 million in the 20th century. A crass Obama photo op exploits Sandy Hook massacre, proven that it staged photos dealing with the dead kids. Just incredibly evil, along with this fake crime. Government democide and disarmament, the greatest threats to uh, uh, 
um, just, just a bunch of key videos, articles up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. But Larry Pratt uh, joins us here today to talk about a host of issues. First off, I want to get into Dianne Feinstein and her bill, uh, where she actually says forced buyback uh, and or forced registration. What's happening there? How much trouble we're in? But then Chicago and Illinois being their model, going for almost a total ban there. Uh, how big a deal is it that we've shot that down for now? Larry Pratt, Executive Director, Gun Owners of America. Good to be with you. Good to be with you, sir. Well, um, they're, they're going to try. And what I have to say is I wish there were guys on our side that would be as tenacious in, in the face of tough fights uh, and willing to just keep the battle going, even if there isn't that much chance of success at the moment. And that's why I see Feinstein. Uh, she probably can't get something out of the Senate, let alone the House. But that doesn't keep her from stopping, because she wants to, uh, she understands that if you don't keep the debate going, you're not going to be able to eventually change the terms of the debate. And uh, that's one reason why our answer to the to the massacre in Newtown uh, was not just an armed guard, which frankly we think would be, well, I guess it's better than nothing, but it's, it's, it's very expensive. And it means that there would be an identifiable person that would presumably be the one person with a gun at a school. And if somebody wants to commit mass murder, begin with the armed guard that's identified as the armed guard carrying the gun, presumably, right out there on the hip like armed guards almost always do. And uh, once he's down or she's down, then it's Katie bar the door on the rest of them. And once again, you're forced to wait for some 20 minutes until the police are able to get there. Now, the the better solution would be to encourage everybody on staff at these schools no matter whether they're teachers or administrators or, or support, like janitors, whatever it might be, uh, and any parent that might be visiting, got to, you know, if you're qualified for concealed carry, you all come, and, and you're welcome to come with your gun. Right now, that's illegal. That is so stuck on stupid. Because a mass shooter is going to break the law. They're ready to kill kids. All exactly. you do is keep the law-abiding citizens out. Well, what about Herald ISD that in 2007 used the state law to arm uh, more than 10 teachers? That way somebody's always there, multiple people, and on the one in a billion chance a teacher went crazy, there'd be other teachers. A crazy teacher could already sneak a gun in. It's kind of like not arming the pilots. You trust them with a 100-ton weapon that you know that's thousands of times more deadly than a gun but you don't trust them with a gun when these are the, about the most proficient people uh with machinery and equipment and tools exactly. out there and in a situation where you've got a mass murder uh underway uh, to complain that the teacher may not be professionally trained excuse me uh even when the shooter was uh, uh, all these mass shootings are done at very close range. Uh, and so self-defense is not something that requires any Oakley. It simply requires that a good guy has a well, gun. I mean, I mean, the so-called left always implies that women can't shoot, which is incredibly sexist. You know in shooting competition, women are as good or now statistically in the Olympics better than men. Hey, listen, I, I, I hate to admit it, but uh, they pay attention better than most of us men, and they learn better. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's not something that we, we can disregard. And the fact is, uh, look at what that one brave woman did. I guess she was the teacher, Victoria Soto. Uh, she had the presence of mind to, to, to hide away the kids, and then she was out uh, running where she became a target, why not have her have a gun, for goodness sake? Oh, imagine what Obviously, she would have done. the presence of mind to use it. Well, here's the issue. They know that the gun culture was the, the bedrock of the republic, along with the First Amendment, free speech, and that it was growing and becoming very popular, so they're striking back now. But expanding on that, uh, they know when there's another mass shooting, and the way they're advertising it, you know, th there will undoubtedly, unfortunately, be some copycats. So we're in a race to get the teachers 
uh, armed now, but but they know when there's the next shooting that if they can just get them registered now, like she wants, then she'll be able to physically get them like her and Cuomo are trying and like they've tried in Illinois. Uh, what's your breakdown on that, Larry? Well, uh, that's why I think it's really important that our side not be simply playing defense. I mean, there are times when you, that's all you, you can't do anything, but. But even now, we can be talking about the 20 years of insanity that have led to the same result, and we kept keep expecting a different result every time. We create a gun-free zone, and oh, how could that person go in and shoot all those people? Well, hello, we we put up a sign that said uh, free. Uh, free sh firing zone here, uh, come on over. I mean, they're like magnets uh, for the scum. Uh, they, they, these people are evil. They're not stupid. Uh, and yet, uh, by contrast, look what happened. Uh, and maybe some of, the, uh, although your listeners are better informed than almost anybody, but uh, still, there wasn't very much attention given to what happened at the Clackamas Mall outside of Portland three days before Newtown. There, a guy had brought a gun into the mall, which was posted no guns, which they can do under state law, even if you had a concealed carry. And he killed two people, wounded another. Hearing that, a good guy with a gun, I'll presume that he didn't see the posting of no guns, uh, ran to the sound of the shots, which in itself is quite remarkable. Uh, it was seen by the shooter as the shooter was unjamming his gun. So instead of getting to kill any more people, nobody having rushed him during the time he was fiddling with his gun, he then uh, committed suicide because he saw the good guy with the gun. And my guess is that we're not going to have any prosecutions <laughs> of the good guy <laughs> because uh, that, that wouldn't look too good on the prosecutor's resume. Larry, we have the U.N. Treaty coming up in March that they want to ram through the Senate. And in it, and, and in the original State Department memorandum 7277, it states that once they've disarmed the people, then they're going to disarm our military and only allow there to be brigades and units assigned to the U.N. and NATO. We already now have the spectacle last year in 2012 of three different congressional hearings where the uh, committees were told that NATO and the U.N., was commanding Obama to launch these wars and that Congress was not involved in war, in war making or, or military operations now. I mean, just over the top, unconstitutional, uh, well, well, treason. Uh, and this is about guns. You know, Feinstein in a speech last week said, well, in a letter she put out, uh, she said, uh, well, this is embarrassing worldwide that we own guns. And even the New York Times, you know, has said, oh, foreign governments don't don't like us owning guns, we need to get rid of them, it's embarrassing. But here's USA Today, uh, their columnist uh, uh, in the article reports, for all the complaints about the leftward tilt in American journalism, it's nothing compared to news operations around the globe. Piers Morgan points to a bigger issue, and it says, why is Russian TV broadcast here in the U.S. transmitted? Uh, uh, Arab News, uh, Al Jazeera, you name it, BBC, Piers Morgan, why? Are the Chinese government, why are they calling for our guns? And why does our media give this attention and act like it's legitimate? I mean, I'm now being criticized by Russian TV because I'm pro-gun. I mean, no one would ever put up with this. But this really is this globalization. And I think that if we get the word out to gun owners through GOA and others, and I'm putting an article out with Watson today pointing out that foreign governments and media are telling Americans what to do. I think this could really backfire on them if we push this information because it's just outrageous. Your take on that? It's very outrageous. Uh, almost immediately after Newtown, the Chinese perhaps uh, were the first ones in the chorus to start singing this anti-American, anti-Second Amendment song calling for, you know, there's too many guns in the United States, blah, blah. Well, of course there would be too many guns from their point of view because uh, we would uh, use our guns to shoot the very people like them who would ever attempt any kind of government like the communist dictatorship in China being imposed here in the United States. Yes. It makes them nervous to think that there's any place in the world 
where the people are trusted with guns. Yeah, they're tyrants. They're tyrants. I mean, the communist Chinese official People's Daily and their TV came out and said, Obama, we support you, quote, wage a war on the Second Amendment. Foreign government saying wage war on us, and Obama's doing it. Yeah, not that he really needed any encouragement, but the, the, I guess they can't resist it. They are so offended. I mean, there are lots of things that I'm offended about. Communist China, thugocracy, Russia, on down the list. Suicide nets, forced abortions, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't uh, expect my government to uh, um, uh, be making a big a deal about it unless, well, <laughs> and maybe if we stop trading with them and, and started treating them the way they should be, we could uh, be the kind of thing to talk about so we'd have in mind what kind of people they are. But you know, I don't tell the Chinese what kind of food to eat, and I don't expect them to tell me anything about freedom because they obviously don't un understand or care to know anything about freedom. It's certainly not their government that was issuing this uh, offense. Well, that's a good point. Just 20 years ago, our government would criticize China for its criminal activity. Now they won't do it because our government is adopting their policies. Exactly. Uh, well, Larry, uh, I mean, even USA Today, uh, Piers Morgan points to bigger issue. They point out that it is our own media piling up with foreign governments and foreigners who are flooding the social media, lobbying to take our guns. Uh, this is really... Uh, It'd be sedition if they were citizens. This is subversion, but we're so accustomed to it, we don't even call it that. I call it subversion to have Russian and Chinese media published in this country saying, take my rights. That is outrageous. And I guess the silence that is uh, kind of deafening is the silence of our government uh, not uh, telling the Chinese that we really don't need their comments about a free society since they obviously don't understand freedom. Uh, that's about as polite. No, as no, I our media it. says we've got to do it because they say so. It's incredible. Diane Feinstein says that. Uh, what are the? What do you expect them to try to do? Not just with her bill, but others. What's the time frame? Obama said yesterday his priority is open borders and gutting the Second Amendment. Uh, what's your uh, battle plan? Well, there, there's a bunch of anti-Second Amendment uh, bills in. I don't expect them to uh, to be successfully pursued either in the Senate or the House. What we have seen is that yesterday uh, and now today, two bills pretty much the same have been filed to do away with gun-free school zones. And I think that's terrific. Uh, Congressman Stockman was the first one in, and he has taken the offensive. He's He's not talking about, oh, you shouldn't be taking our semi-automatics. Well, yeah, of course they shouldn't. We know that. But what we should be doing is working to get rid of the invitation that's posted around every school for mass murder. No guns beyond this point. This is a gun-free zone. Hey, sure it is. Um, th that's just insanity, and that's defined as repeating the same thing and expecting a different result each time. <laughs> and if they want to believe something like that, that's fine. But uh, as for the rest of us, we've got to say, mm, no, uh, we're not playing by those rules. I agree. We've got to get on the offense and point out that it's the government and the liberals, the tyrants, because they're not really liberals, creating the gun-free zones and advertising it that is absolutely responsible for this. Um, and then they want to blame us gun owners after they created the zone uh, that was the shooting fish in the barrel zone. For those that don't know, more than 10 bills have now been introduced in Congress. How many do you expect to be introduced before this session is up? Oh, it'll be a lot. Um, but I think there's going to be some uh, even more coming from the good guys. And those have a chance because even as uh, Senator Coburn put a measure on a spending bill, it was a credit card bill, actually, a uh, horrible bill, but he knew it was going to pass because the president really wanted it. And he was able to get the long-time ban on guns in national parks done away with. He took a House measure, put it on a, an amendment to a spending measure, finance measure, and off it went. The president signed it. No, no, you're right. Instead of defending against him, we do that 50 percent. The other 50 offense to get them off balance. I want to talk about more ways to get on the offense in our final segment with Larry Pratt, executive director of Gun Owners of America. Get over there and join it today and get their free alerts. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alex Jones, your host.
Uh, don't forget, we are not funded by the Russian government like RT is calling for the end of the Second Amendment. We're not funded by the uh, blood of the Chinese people like their Politburo has with, with their media outlets uh, calling for the end of our Second Amendment. We're funded by you. So support our sponsors at InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, GetPrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, nightly news uh, memberships, uh, 10 memberships for $5.95 a month. Uh, buy uh, the books, the videos, uh, buy the InfoWars magazine in bulk and get it out to people. All of it at InfoWars.com and spread the word. We're growing, but we're getting more and more opposition because we're having an effect. Now, Gun Owners of America uh, Chairman Larry Pratt is with us. It's also important to join gun owners or at least sign up for the free email alerts. Up to the minute on the gun grabs, you can defend the republic. We're having victories like in Illinois yesterday. Moving fast, why not get on the offense too, sir, with bringing up Fast and Furious? Hey, Obama, why don't you cry for all the dead Mexican kids you ki killed shipping guns into Mexico? Yeah, the idea that uh, guns need to be banned in the United States, uh, such as uh, Dianne Feinstein and other uh, members of Congress are proposing, and not a word about having armed the Mexican cartel thanks to a United States government program, Fast and Furious. These people are, they understand staying on offense. You catch them red-handed, and all they tell you is, so do you believe me? Are you lying eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, the incredible amount of lying. What has it done, though, where they denied they wanted our guns all these years when we had their own publication saying they want total abolition, that now they're out in the open? I see this, if we seize the moment, totally blowing up in their face and reversing everything they've done. I think so, too. I've had that sense that maybe my my good friend Piers Morgan, I maybe haven't told you, but I'm thinking of setting up a fan club, and I'll be the head <laughs> of it. Uh, <laughs> He brought us more new members than we've had in a long time at one at, at one time, uh, and I think that that so has has outraged people. And uh, frankly, I think it showed some. Uh, when I've talked to other conservative groups in Washington, it, it really encouraged them to to realize that you know we don't have to just sit there and be uh, sort of a, a captive uh, tied to a chair and take our beating. Uh, exactly. These fake liberals aren't liberals. They're authoritarians. Call them authoritarians. And don't let them sit in the position of authority in fake moral authority and always put us on the defense and tell us we're child killers when they're the child killers. I mean, if, if we're child killers, they're 10 times the child killer. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, we don't support abortion, most of us. Uh, exactly. So, uh, there's a big exemption right there. And a lot of children get killed in the genocides of dictatorial governments all around the world. And the, the pattern was very clear. The guns and other weapons were collected first before the real killing got started. Uh, We've got an article up at InfoWars.com that has a special video we did, Larry, exposing democide, governments killing 290-plus million people in the last century after gun control, and it's got all the proof and all the facts. Very important to get that out to people. In closing, in the one minute we have left, anything else you want to warn people about? Uh, oh, during the break, you said executive orders. He may still do that, though. That is a real problem. Uh, he could simply say you can't buy a handgun over a certain caliber and on up, and you can't buy a long gun if it takes a detachable magazine. Uh, that, uh, uh, that would be illegal, it would be unconstitutional, but that doesn't seem to be a problem for this president. And we'd eventually beat him in court, but the dealers would have no choice but to comply because if he pulls their license, they're out of business that second. And that's so, right. Uh, that's quite a barrel to have us over. You know, I just thought of something. We need a gun owner's not, not a gun shop union so that they can stand up to the ATF because you know how brutal they are. They're nice mom and pops, you name it. I mean, they really are gangsters because I've experienced them repeatedly. Uh, and people, I've never been around feds that act like people out of good fellas. Let me tell you, the, the ATF's a joke. Uh, Larry Pratt, thank you so much. Uh, gun Owners Alex, of America. Thank you. thank you, sir. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a great weekend. You too, my friend. Next hour coming up.
Aaron Dykes here on January 1st, 2013. Now, Alex Jones talked on the show today about how the system views us as human resources. And this is happening more and more under the eugenics model, more and more here in the United States as we adopt Obamacare, as we move towards a planned economy where there's limited economic options and less and less freedom all the time. Now, I just wanted to point out they really do consider us human resources. I'm going to play you a clip from a 1974 family planning clip called Communicate, Speak, They Are Listening. Family planning is, of course, code for eugenics. It's the softer side of Sears, the softer side of eugenics. Let's go to that clip right now. In Kenya, the Minister of Finance and Development offers valuable support. Well, my views, which really are government views, is that family planning is an integral part of development planning. It is an essential part for the reason that you cannot hope to plan other forms of production if you cannot plan the production of the main resource, the human beings. We view it as an aspect of human freedom. Incredibly, you see this finance and development minister claim that it's the state's role to decide how many people reproduce, who and when, because they are human resources, part of the overall planned economy system, which time and again leads to limited freedom and basically totally slavery. But on top of that, you see this incredible 1984 Orwellian backwards doublespeak where freedom is slavery. Somehow when the state tells you if you can breed or not, that's freedom from the natural restrictions on breeding that otherwise occur. So that is not slave to just natural forces. And this is what I said in Swahili to these people, that we view family planning education as an extension of personal liberty. And you can find that film in the National Archives, signing off for Infowars.com. And there is just one of the little uh, nightly news vignettes uh, that are turned out every night. Uh, InfoWars Nightly News some days is like three hours long. Usually it's about an hour and a half. Soon it will go to an hour with a few commercial breaks so that it can be put out on cable and television uh, systems. It already is. We're already very thankful to cable systems overseas and domestically that pick it up, edit down the high-def file the, the next day and air it on cable systems. It's great for folks with access television shows around the country, too, to pick out special reports, things you like. Uh, from PrisonPlanet.tv and then uh, put it out in your area. Because, see, the truth is so much more powerful than lies. A thimble of truth trumps a bucket of lies. And the globalists are discredited now. They're in trouble. They've got a bunch of brain-numbed, tranced-out, drugged-out zombies that follow them that, and that giggle at you when you... I mean, they're victims. I mean, if you pull up and there's a homeless person who's obviously schizophrenic been on drugs their whole life, bombed out of their brain, and they're going, you're the devil, you're the devil, or, you know, talking to themselves. You don't get mad. Now, if your uh, neighbor who you've been friends with for 20 years came over and said, you're scum, you're the devil, you might get offended because that's someone who is, you've thought cognitively together, or you'd be worried about them. But I don't, it doesn't hurt my ego at all when a victim laughs at me. Or when these even establishment media people following the same old laundry list scripts try to attack us with buzzwords and stuff. Because we have the thinkers, they have the stinkers. We have the people that understand history and are rugged and love liberty, and they've got a bunch of losers. So I, for one, know that liberty is on the march. You see, things are so dark, I, I saw some emails going, Alex says, we're on the march, the empire's on the run. You know, the, the empire is on the march. Yeah, but if we take the fight to them, we can use their offensive as a way to defeat them. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live, and Liberty lovers are back on the offense. We have smashed the most draconian gun control legislation ever seen in the Midwest or even in the West itself. Only New York City has trumped the almost total gun ban that the entire state of Illinois was trying to uh, ram through. 
They were trying to take the Chicago style gun ban and take it right through the entire state of Illinois. And, you know, Illinois, I've been up there many times, have family that lives up there, works in Chicago. There is no way that the farmers and ranchers and hardworking people that live in the rural areas are turning their guns in. And uh, decades ago, they warned people in Illinois. And the people in Illinois, you know, warned the legislators. They said, if you ever register our guns, which they've done through the FOID card, you are simply going to allow the government to come confiscate legally owned guns. Because it's been done all over the world and in the U.S. and in Canada. And we've got Vanity Fair. We've got London Guardian. We've got... Huffington Post, we've got them all calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. Here's a Vanity Fair headline. Let's repeal the Second Amendment. Same thing out of uh, London Guardian. Uh, here's Huffington Post. Repealing the Second Amendment would make us better than this. Uh, and, and again, that's George Soros connected Huffington Post. You, you know, I sit here and talk about Chinese media that's on some cable systems here in the U.S., government controlled and I talk about it being foreign agents, clearly illegal, when they're engaged in our domestic operations. They wouldn't put up with it. Uh, no government does that. No people put up with that. I talk about Russia today. You can have foreign Russian government-funded news, but when it starts saying repeal the Second Amendment or open your borders up like they're doing or bring in socialism, they're trying to cause a Russian revolution in this country. And, and I'm too busy to monitor it, but because I was hearing from listeners it was happening, so I started spot-checking it. And, man, they're tearing me down. They're tearing America down. They're tearing uh, constitutionalists down. They're tearing Ron Paul down now. I mean, it is bad what's on Russia today. Bad. I mean, it's worse than CNN or MSNBC now. And I guess for a while they operated and posed as patriots to get an audience uh, and are now doing this, but I mean, it's hard to deal with. And people are like, well, let them have their First Amendment. Listen, if I went to Russia and set up a media operation with $100 million a year, let's say I had that, that's what RT gets roughly, according to the federal filings that are out there. They would arrest me so fast, it would make my head spin. And that's because Russia is very authoritarian and getting more authoritarian, unfortunately. Uh, but... The license would be revoked even back a decade ago when Russia wasn't as authoritarian. They're taking the Iranians' license to be on cable away in England and in Europe. And by the way, uh, press TV is milk toast compared you know, to, to, to even my show uh, covering political issues. And I get invited on Iranian TV. It's, it's worldwide. So it's, it's worthwhile to do because it's in English and it's in cable systems all over the world. And I can go on and talk about the New World Order, the Second Amendment, liberty, freedom, whatever I want. And so it's my message. And so even if those things are state-run to a certain extent, it's my message getting out. So I turn down going on Japanese TV or Brazilian TV or Iranian TV just because I'm too busy. And Japanese TV and Iranian TV always want me to go down to a satellite uplink facility downtown, which takes 30 minutes to go down there and then find parking. And then, I mean, Austin's very metropolitan now. It's hard to find parking. Or it's outrageously, you know, $10 to park for two hours. And then I got to get in the building and go through security and go through all the trouble and sit there for 30 minutes before and go on. I would do RT because they do Skype. Boom, turn it on, do 10 minutes, I'm done. And I, I, it was almost a nuisance, so they wanted me on there like every week, but I could talk about the New World Order, the Patriot Act, the NDAA, Al-Qaeda being government run. I could really get some good done, so I'd do it. But I'd badmouth Stalin and communism as well. And uh, they didn't like that. And uh, I haven't been on there in eight months, which, which is, again, no skin off my back. I've just ignored it. You know, I mean, I've been in New York before, supposed to go on Fox News, and they go, oh, sorry, uh, you know, higher-ups don't want you on now. Well, let's give blame where it's due. It was Glenn Beck at the time was throwing fits over it. The point is, is it's no sweat off my back. I mean, it's not like, oh, I good, I get to go on television. Like they say, I'm on Piers Morgan, the seventh, when he gets back. I, if they cancel it, I'm not even worried about it. In fact, I'm kind of lazy at night. You know, that's fine. Not really lazy. I get so tired. I don't care when stuff gets canceled. They're trying to get me to fly up there right now. And I'm like, no, no, no. Well, we'll give you three segments if you do, you know.
right now you've got 12 minutes. We'll give you, you know, 16 minutes. And I'm like, no, just do it via satellite. That way, if you cancel it, I just drive home 30 minutes. I don't have to miss my family because I only see them a few hours at night when I do. Didn't even see my children yesterday except in the morning. And I'm not complaining. It's just that I'm not criticizing RT now because I haven't been on there in eight months. Because some people are like, oh, uh, you know, Alex, you go on RT, you must work for Putin. And I'm like, no, it is state run, state funded, but they don't control what I say. I'll go on there and talk about foreign banks taking the U.S. over. But something changed eight months ago, and it's now come out in the EU. It was in the news last week. Herman von Rumpy, one of the heads of the EU, the head of the commission, has been in meetings with Putin and others, and they're going to merge uh, the European Union as a new Soviet, and, and even the president of the Czech Republic has said this, but it's now official, with the old USSR. And they're putting the hammers and sickles back on the tanks. They're, the, I mean, the, you know, I, the old timers were right. Russia played possum. And so there were different policies just a year ago. Now it is full bore, merged with Obama, you know, the, the, uh, the authoritarians uniting against our Second Amendment. And I find it outrageous that you've got Al Jazeera, state-run media out of Qatar, on record, who even funds CNN, that's come out, with the uh, Amber Lyon news. You've got other state-run media funded directly by the uh, Kremlin, on record, $100 million a year on average, dollars. Uh, RT America, you've got uh, BBC, you've got Piers Morgan over on CNN. Uh, in fact, USA Today lists a whole bunch of others here and points out why are foreign governments and state-run media calling for us to turn our guns in? Now, granted, USA Today will have like 15 anti-gun editorials for every editorial like this, but this is a good editorial uh, by... Dan Gaynor of the Boone Pickens Media Fellow uh, and Vice President of Business and Culture. I mean, he's saying, man, this is over the top. And, and, and it really is over the top. I mean, the Japanese would not put up with an American, much less government run. Imagine if I showed up with 100 million U.S. dollars a year and set up a TV station in Russia or in Japan or in Saudi Arabia or in Brazil or Mexico, anywhere, and tell, started telling them what to do and bad-mouthing George Washington, ladies and gentlemen, you wouldn't have to have the government throw them out. The people would go and physically throw you out. Guaranteed. Bilderberg met two years ago in Switzerland, a year and a half ago, and people showed up with torches to throw them out, and a member of the EU parliament went in and got beat up by police, and then the police got orders to stand down. So the Bilderberg group panicked and flew out on helicopters when presidents of three cantons showed up. And the cantons are the states, but they actually run the federal government there. So the equivalent of super senators showed up and said, you are to stand down, and helicopters, dozens of them landed, and the top Bilderbergs fled. And that actually came out again in the news yesterday that indeed they are freaked out and may not even meet in Europe again next year, certainly never again Switzerland, because the government of Switzerland started turning against them and going, yeah, what are a bunch of foreigners here trying to get rid of our sovereignty? They were meeting. Part of the agenda was how to get rid of Swiss sovereignty. The Swiss aren't going to put up with that because they understand that's why they're wealthy and powerful because they don't have foreign banks sucking off of them. And because the vampires have sucked everybody else dry, they run to the one place they don't completely run to live because they haven't polluted it with their policies. Everybody's fleeing France to Switzerland right now and Belgium for lower taxes. The football stars, the soccer stars, uh, as they're properly called, the uh, all of it. And, and so my issue is, here's the talking points because it's the facts. I go with the truth. We've got the truth. We can destroy these people or at least make them back off. Okay? It's time to let RT and all of them know. And I did this a few weeks ago, so they're really attacking me now, which is great. I mean, you're such fools. America is totally lining up behind me right now. I saw some of the votes on one of the videos, like 90% in favor of us, when the Russian government starts attacking Alex Jones and the Second Amendment. Good. Good, call me bad, call me evil, attack me, Russia. Good. I'm not immoral like your government. 
When the globalists tried to start a war with you in 2008, I was against it because it was wrong morally. And I know America's run by foreign banks. I want my government back. I want my country back. And I don't want foreign banks taking my government over. I don't want the Russian government manipulating my life. I don't want the Chinese government manipulating my life. I don't like the Mexican government trying to dictate my life. I don't like the federal government trying to run my life, okay? I'm a sovereign, I'm free. You got that? I stand with the truth. I stand with what I really believe is morally right. I don't sit there and try to manipulate my audience and use buzzwords on them over and over again like Alex Jones is a fear monger, Alex Jones is a fear monger, Alex Jones is a fear monger like 10 times in one report. You think that works? Everybody sees right through you, okay? You're not gonna get our guns, Russians. You understand that, Vladimir Putin? You're not gonna destroy America. You understand that? You're gonna find out who's who right now. You're gonna see people who claim they were patriots, anti-New World Order, come out of the woodwork against InfoWars, against yours truly, Alex Jones. You're going to see a foreign media come out against us, as they're doing all over foreign newspapers across Europe, across England, uh, China, you name it, they are attacking yours truly because they know that we are able to take basic facts and hypocrisies and get them out to the public and they see the articles we put out going viral worldwide and hurting them. The enemy has identified us as a key point. And you're going to find out who's who now as Europe lines up with Russia and Obama to set up a world government. The globalists are bringing their system in right now. And the different alignments are being made in the power structure. I ought to get Joel Skousen on. He is really smart when it comes to breaking all this down. I concur with a lot of his analysis, but I'm really seeing, I think I wanna get what he thinks. Give him a call. I know Salente's coming up. See if he can come on for like five minutes today, but like, like an hour next week, just to give me his take on this, this Russia uh, really snuggling up to Obama right now. But, but that's a side issue. The point is that all of this is beginning to unfold. All of this is beginning to accelerate. And if we can beat Dianne Feinstein and her gun ban bill, if we can beat things like what the Illinois legislature thought they had the votes to do, but we defeated, you defeated. We're on like three affiliates in Illinois, including Chicago. Uh, if we're able to do this together, and if we turn this around against them and then use this as a way to get more guns into schools and more guns into gun-free zones, and then you're going to have more cases of where shooters go in to kill people and get taken out. There should be nowhere criminals and shooters are safe. I mean, you, you look at the higher gun ownership in areas like Texas and Arizona, they don't have home invasions at anywhere near the numbers of places like England where they've taken all the guns. England has triple the violent crime rate that we have, look it up. But our media lies and actually creates fake graphs, just like they tell you Israelis don't have guns in school. You know they have guns in school. You can go to Haritz or Jerusalem Post, type in guns in Israeli schools, see articles going back over decades, see new articles. They lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. They think you're stupid because it's all they've got. We've got the truth, they've got the lies. And you're going to find out who's who. But also, people that have been on the fence for decades are suddenly coming out against the New World Order, are coming out in support of the Second Amendment. You're going to see who the good guys are right now as well. People you thought were just milk toast are suddenly getting hardcore because they realize that now there's no hope unless we get serious. That's it. We either get hardcore and stop playing games or it's over. And you know what? When we get hardcore, we win. When we get angry, we win. When we get aggressive, we win. When we stand up and fight, we win. Fight against that? No, we will run and we will live. Sure, fight and you may die. Run and you'll live at least a while. But someday, lying in your beds, you'll wish that you had done the right thing now and could come back here and tell our enemies that you can take our lives, but you'll never take our freedom. The globalists have done everything they can to gut our economy, sell us out, globalize us. The UN tells our military what to do. NATO tells us. Foreign governments tell us what to do. Foreign media tells us what to do. Illegal aliens come here. I don't hate them. I hate how they're being used and get a free uh, kidney, over $200,000, 
paid for by taxpayers and Loyola together. And then the guy complained and said, it's not enough. I want all my other immigrant friends to have free stuff. You're only being given free stuff as an advertisement. Come to America. You can have your baby for free. Come to America. You can get a free kidney when citizens don't get that. And why is that? To drive down the wages and implode us, just like the globalists use China to implode our wages. Doesn't help the Chinese people. They're worse off than they were. Suicide nets around the factories, forced abortions. Mexico's worse off than it was 20 years ago under NAFTA and GATT. UN down there forcing everybody off their land up to Mexico City to live like slaves. I fight against that. I want the Mexican people to be wealthy and strong and to have freedom because I want them to be free, but also doing the right thing also intellectually is always good for you because then it would be a wonderfully wealthy, good, happy, productive place that would not be a, 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 a time bomb helping the globalists bring down America. You understand that, folks? You can't have our neighbors to the south living in squalor and not have it implode us. But let me tell you, bringing all those poor people up here is going to implode us. It's going to flood our lifeboat. It's not going to help them. And the globalists know that. That's why they want our guns. They want open borders. They want socialist health care for the state to run our health care. They're control freaks that want to run our lives. 800-259-9231. Wide open phones. 800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones, defending the republic. Join me. We're on the march. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live. And I think the one reason we've been successful here, well, there's a lot of them, God's good grace, research, doggedness, but also the fact that I'm naturally excitable when I'm dealing with tyranny. And we've been able to translate that energy into others to get America moving out of our inertia, to, to get America understanding we're under attack and to get people into the mindset of not just taking it, but standing up. And big things have small beginnings. Once we start the ball rolling, it's very hard to get it rolling, but now it's starting to roll. And I was thinking about it. They've had Mexico, the Mexican president, come out the last few years and say ban the Second Amendment and blame crime in Mexico on it when they have a total gun ban down there. And most of the violence is full auto stuff, you know, shipped in by uh, big banks who've been caught flying guns in, drugs out. Uh, the major banks, it's all over the news. Hand grenades, rocket launchers. The drug cartels have tanks. They're not buying tanks from you know, gun shops. Fast and Furious was staged to blame the Second Amendment, and it came out in the memo that they were going to blame the Second Amendment and blame the violence in Mexico for it and try to go after it. Well, even though they got caught, the White House still went forward with that. They were going to have press conferences with you know the poor women talking about their dead children, just like they're doing Sandy Hook. But because it turned out they were the ones behind it, they had to kind of back off halfway and it fizzled. But right on time, Sandy Hook happened. And, and I saw some more of the foreign media going, conspiracy theorists uh, say that you know, there were multiple shooters. Well, the media always reports multiple shooters because little kids were seeing you know, people and making the reports. No, we've aired the newscast. It was helicopters. And, 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 and footage and surveillance cameras of multiple guys in camo arrested out in the woods. It wasn't little kids filing these reports. There's video of it. And they said he had an AR-15 M4 inside, and it was in the car. I, I mean, they staged Gulf of Tonkin. Our government staged mass shootings in Iran in 53 to blame it on Mohammed Mosaddegh in mass shootings that they blamed on the government. Declassified. 1999, declassified. Decades and decades later, led by Kermit Roosevelt, grandson of Teddy Roosevelt, and MI6 and OSS. Well, it turned into CIA by then. And, and Operation Gladio, where the Pentagon and NATO launched hundreds of mass shootings and bombings in Europe to demonize their political opposition, whether it be left wing or right wing. That's been declassified by the Italian parliament. Their operations with, the, with NATO. I mean, mass shootings are in Operation Northwoods. Type in Operation Northwoods. Guys, will you do that? The PDFs at the National Archives. And go in there and it says the Pentagon would conduct mass shootings at shopping malls, at markets, and on the streets and would shoot Americans and blame it on the Cubans as a pretext to invade. But Kennedy said no. Bobby liked the plan. 
uh, as much as people mm, uh, lionize Bobby Kennedy, he actually supported bombing the U.S. Embassy in Honduras as a pretext to invade, and his brother overruled that as well. Kennedys weren't perfect uh, by any stretch. Of the by the way, that's all declassified. Just type in, I think it's like BBC, AP, you name it. It's been declassified. It's not debatable. So when I see something like this right on time and it has the earmarks, I'm like, yeah, they could have staged that. I mean, with the Batman thing, people keep saying, why are we connecting this to Batman? You know, mainstream corporate, foreign press, and others. It's not like we said Batman would be connected to shootings after it. We said before it had clear triggers. And they mailed out these Bane letters to, to media showing Bane attack points. That name things like Sandy Hook and Hinkley, one of the shooters. And the Batman shooter was in a government mind control program. That's in the Colorado newspapers. That he was in a special DARPA defense program of brain interface with machines to take over the cognitive uh, abilities. Thought helmets. You know, like in the movies where they put the helmet on and it picks up your brain waves. He was in a super advanced, top secret Pentagon-funded program with a top Air Force psychiatrist as his handler. Let me keep going for about an hour and a half here. Because, I mean, it just goes boom, 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 boom. I don't know. Maybe that is a coincidence. Maybe it's a coincidence. I said, I believe the Batman movie coming out will be a trigger for bombings and shootings. I mean, I'm on record months before it came out. Who put out Batman? Warner Brothers even tried to get our video taken off YouTube, breaking it down. Tried to claim copyright on it. We went and refiled and it's fair use. We were just exposing scenes in the trailer. I said it's, it's trying to invoke a subconscious blueprint for revolution. And Bane symbolizes the Illuminati. Fire goes up. And how they leak that beforehand. See, these little brains of the New World Order think we're all stupid and don't see what they're doing. All right, I said I'd go to your phone calls. The point is the globalist are coming after the Second Amendment right now. And they're going to come after the pension funds, and they're, going, and they're trying to set up all over the country, you're hearing, in California, in Oklahoma, in, in uh, Virginia, in Tennessee, in Texas, the police are setting up federally funded gang checkpoints where, let me see, you got any tattoos? Get out, I want to look at your tattoos. No judge, no jury, no probable cause, no reasonable suspicion. Let me search your car. Oh, by the way, we're going to look for guns now. That's in the news. By the way, we're going to do a cavity search now. This is martial law. I'm not saying martial law is coming. Martial law is here. The police state isn't coming. The police state is here. That's the tagline from Police State 4, the rise of FEMA, came out two years ago. And I've got state reps on, and governors and army colonels on admitting gun confiscation drills. Remember they had gun confiscation grills in Arcadia, Iowa, where they did the they practiced raiding the local gun shop, going door to door with the citizens, taking their guns in a drill, the town of 650. And I had the colonel on. He goes, well, yeah, we are doing this drill, but what's wrong with that? And the media called me a conspiracy theorist. It said, yeah, they're doing a gun confiscation drill, but Alex Jones is still a conspiracy theorist. So it's like, well, yeah, we're doing the gun confiscation drill, but it's not like he gets laurels thrown at him. Oh, you were right. Oh, thank you for warning us. Oh, let's stop this nightmare. It's, oh, no, he's bad. Oh, Alex Jones said they were going to start, you know, having the TSA on the streets. Now it's happening. Oh, my gosh, man, you were right. Tell us more. It's like, oh, you fear monger. Because that's all they've got. But people aren't listening to them anymore. But they don't care. They're arrogant. They're there in their big fancy CNN and RT and MSNBC facilities. And they really believe it. You know, when The View called me a few years ago and said, we want you to come here. And I said, I don't want to do it on satellite. They said, we don't do satellite. And I said, I know, I just don't want to do it. And they said, you're kidding. You don't want to do The View. I mean, you know, the presidents want to come on here. And I said, uh, nope. And they said, listen, we'll pay for your ticket, you know, direct flight, everything. And I said, then, and then a bunch of other media called to get me to New York. So I said, I said, okay, I'll, I'll come to New York. Because that way I figured, you know, they wouldn't cancel me because that was my concern. I'm not going to be chumped or schmucked into that. And then I go, well, I want first class tickets or I'm not going. You know, it's ABC's money. And they go, oh, sorry, we bought, never bought anyone first class. And I said, I'm not doing it. And they go, we're calling your bluff. We're not doing it. You're not on the show. I said, good, click. They call back, okay, we'll buy you first class tickets. My point is, they hate it that I don't care about them.
They absolutely cannot stand it that I don't worship them. And they hate the fact that you don't worship them anymore either. They hate the fact that you're awake to their fraud. It's like the emperor's new clothes. I'm going to go to your calls. Do, do, do you know that old parable of these uh, scammers uh, end up coming to the king and they say, we're going to weave you the most fine linen, but only the most royal can see this gold linen. So they, 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 they sit there for hours imaginarily weaving, and he, 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 well, he's royal, surely. he could, So he thinks, maybe I'm not royal. Maybe I'm an imposter. I better not say I don't see it. So they put, put it on him, and he goes out, and he's in his underwear. He's not really wearing clothes. But no one wants to say that the emperor is naked. Well, finally, he gets totally naked by the third garment and is in a parade naked, and no one wants to say he's naked. And finally, a three-year-old steps forward and laughs and says, the emperor has no clothes, and everyone dies laughing. And that's how this works with these people, okay? The emperor has no clothes. Laugh at them like you laugh at a rattlesnake that's rattling its rattle at you when you've got space-age technology and you know this rattler isn't going to make it. Oh, you think I'm going to reach down and let you bite me? No, no, no. I have, I have a shotgun, and I'm talking about politically. I have a shotgun rattlesnake. I'm going to step back about 20 feet. I'm going to put a bead right dead center. And you're not going to be as uppity after I pull this trigger. <laughs> they can feel Liberty's fingers wrapping around their throats. To use another analogy. We're like a giant boa constrictor that's wrapped around them. And they're busy telling us how powerful they are and all the stuff they're going to do to us. Call their bluff. Call their bluff. And mean it. It's like... I'm not saying playing chicken's good, but that's, that, that's just what it's all about. You're not turning off, and you're ready to die. You're going to win the $20,000 prize. And people bet and play chicken. They're that crazy. Why don't people that are that crazy get crazy for liberty, and we can beat these people very, very quickly? Why not just say, I'm all in, I'm done, that's it, I'm committed. See, that scares them. That scares them. The will scares the globalist. And it's now time to have the will and realize they're going to take everything we got anyways. We might as well start getting aggressive with these people. All right, let's go to your phone calls. Uh, Angela in Nebraska, you're on the air about media propaganda. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Um, there's an artist that I love. I'm keeping it really quick. Her name is Santi Gold, and I don't know if you've seen this video, but it's called The Keepers. And all of the food at the dinner table is poisoned, and they all have cancer wigs on or wigs. And the mother's pumping the wig, and the chicken has breast on it because it's over hormone. And Santi White, the director and artist Santi Gold, is trying to um, basically expose the fact that we're all being poisoned poisoned with their hormones and the oil spills and the radioactive food. And she can't use the word cancer, but I can see through it because my mom died of cancer and wore the cancer wig. Well, what happens is the system intimidates you and says, you can't do this, you can't do that. Uh, you know, they tried to sue milk producers that put no GMO in it, but they countersued and won the right to say our milk doesn't have, you know, growth hormone in it. Uh, so... Uh, Absolutely. Our girls are going into puberty now at an average age of 10. It used to be 14. Our boys are going into puberty late. Uh, I mean, they're killing us. The cancer rates are off the chart. It's funny to them. And they just want to go, oh, come on, conspiracy theorist. No one's poisoning you. That's the new thing. Uh, Russia Today was saying there's no chemtrails. I mean, the government admits they're spraying barium salts, aluminum dioxide, and other stuff on record in massive tests everywhere. One got stopped a few months ago out in New Mexico because the whistle got blown on Bill and Melinda Gates. We're going to spray a bunch of stuff on a town. And they're just like, oh, there's no secret testing on you when everybody knows about the thousands of tests, including lethal ones. We're done. You don't just sit here and tell us this isn't going on. And because you're the authority, we sit here and, you know, bend over to it. God bless you, ma'am. I appreciate your call. Let's talk to Sean in Arizona. Let's talk about the Russians uh, listening on WWCR. Go ahead. Thank you, Alex. I haven't talked to you in a while. I have a, a great story from back in 1989 in Jackson Hole. There was a summit there in the third week of September with uh, Foreign Minister, Russian Foreign Minister uh, Sherbanazi and James Baker, our Secretary of State. The Russian Secret Service, or equivalent, came into Jackson Hole Valley uh, three weeks beforehand. Uh, 
at the end of August. They were there for a month. Um, in that area of Wyoming, hunting season starts um, in some areas on the 28th of August. The Russian Secret Service equivalent told our uh, the people up in Teton County that were and the state people that were working with our federal and their federal people. The Russians let it be known that they were very unsettled. That they had always been told that the Americans uh, had a lot of guns, but what they were seeing. You know, one and two uh, loaded uh, rifles uh, in in uh, rifle racks in the cabs of pickups uh, continuously all day, wherever they were in the valley. Uh, some of them were even afraid. So, uh, well, yeah, because that the, very crew of Russians had just killed 67 million people, raped their wives, beat their brains out, worked people to death in work camps. They were used to being in total power and everybody's scared of them and seeing real human beings armed who weren't scared of them totally freaks them out because they're cowards. Authoritarians are cowards. And the Israeli government's been bad-mouthing our guns when we pay for theirs. The Russians, the Chinese, the British government, all of them can go straight back to North Korea. I'm sorry, finish your story. I have one other point here, because uh, I've been studying this thing uh, since uh, the late 70s. Uh, you are absolutely right. The kibosh is on uh, for our freedom in everything. I'd like to make a quick point on what happened with the markets yesterday. There was a release of a statement uh, by the feds that panicked the uh, the whole markets. And I, I believe the reason they, um, they let it out at this time was because they want, of course, more austere. Uh, austere look, I, look I predicted Monday on air, we got to find the clip when the market went up 200 points, and they, or, or was it Tuesday because of the fiscal cliff deal. I said, that's a fake sugar high. The plunge protection team controls it. They're going to jack it up and then run it right back down because they're the insiders on record. Congress, they say, is allowed to insider trade. Of course, they're not, but they say they are because they're criminals. The ones that are involved and they all know so of course they run it up and run it down and then run it back up go ahead and then the last thing i, I sat and watched c-span last night and watched joe biden uh uh swear in the new senators and uh, you know it's uh, it's a shame um a lot of those folks have young families and uh, they'll just be uh turned uh, every which way but loose and never really know what's going on uh in the country it takes effort like uh I've studied it for 40 years, and you've studied it for 30. It takes effort to research these things to really understand what is going on. Why do you think the globalists claim they were fighting with the Russians just a year ago, two years ago, and now they're all chummy, and the Russians are over here saying, you know, let, you know let's get rid of freedom, let's take the guns, uh, anybody that criticizes the government's evil? I mean, why do you think they're doing that? Well... Because now is the time. I mean, uh, we're at this point uh, where we're the most vulnerable. We, we've, we've got a, um, an administration that is uh, more sympathetic to globalist causes than we ever had. And, uh, and the kibosh is on, just like you say every day. You, 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 you're absolutely right. Well, I want to say 17 years on air and, you know, two decades of research, I've never been one-tenth this concerned. And I just hope listeners get that. I mean, th this is the time where just because we think we're winning the Second Amendment battle right now, that's because we got on the offensive. I guarantee you they're getting ready for false flags. They, all the signs are there. And they're going to blame it on us. And we've got to instantly come out and not take the guilt they put on us. Minute one, when they blame us, we got to go, well, hey, you did it then. Because, and they go, how dare you? Well, well, you're saying we did it. No, we don't believe a thing you say. You did it. And they'll go, well, that's outrageous. Well, you just said we did it. You did it. You did it. You did it. You have the history of staging stuff. You did it. You're the suspect. You're the suspect. You're the suspect, government. You're the foreign bank run collaborators. Get out of our country. Get out. Get out. Get out. And I've been ranting about foreign governments and media teaming up against the American people. This is a big deal. And the globalists just think that because we're Americans, we have such hospitality. That's what it is. Oh, well, you go ahead, Russians and Chinese communists and corrupt Mexican government. You know, we'll turn our guns and we're sorry we killed those kids. Yeah, publish our names in the newspaper like we're uh, criminals. Yeah, you know what? We'll prove we're good. That's the mind game. But we take the fact that foreign governments are in our face. If we take that fact and point it out, we can use their outrageous attempted takeover to totally turn this debate around.
and, and it's starting to happen. If you go to InfoWars.com, Obama teams up with foreign media and governments to destroy Second Amendment, Paul Watson and Alex Jones. Russian, British, Australian talking heads. Yeah, and, and the Israelis didn't back us up on the Second Amendment. Their foreign ministry at least. We need to demand a full statement on that to correct that. Uh, we need uh, to, and of course it's in there, Al Jazeera is coming out against the Second Amendment. I mean, it's ridiculous. And of course, they don't speak for the Australians. They don't speak for the Israelis. They don't speak for the Russians. We're not against the Chinese or Russian people. It's their corrupt governments. Get your stinking hands off my guns. Okay, you understand that? You understand that? Just like I told our corrupt government when they tried to start a war with Russia, don't do it. That is what this is all about, ladies and gentlemen. Gerald Salente is coming up. I'm going to go to some more of your calls as well. We've got a listener with solutions on KKGM 1630 up in Dallas. Great affiliate up there. Covers Dallas-Fort Worth. Everybody needs to spread the word to friends and family about all of our affiliates you're listening on. Also, don't forget, we are listener-supported. We need your prayers more than anything. I mean, you can see it. You can feel it. We're at the tip of the spear. We need your prayers. And we need your financial support, buying books, videos, T-shirts, uh, the uh, magazine, which is at cost, but it gets the word out. Uh, all of it, InfoWarsShop.com, high-quality pro-pure water filters, 10% uh, off with promo code uh, uh, WATER. Uh, just all of the information, strategic relocation, breaking down the globalist threat, that new film we produced, all of it at InfoWarsStore.com or 888-253-3139. Uh, let's go to Ryan in Texas, uh, again, a 16.30 a.m. listener. Uh, who has some quick solutions. Go ahead. Actually, I don't have uh, solutions. I wanted to talk to you about them. Now, um, I've been a listener for a while. You have a ton of knowledge. And I know that your main message is really to spread the word. So, you know, taking, taking that knowledge, uh, I started my own teacher company. So, obviously, just to spread the word. Good. And uh, like you said a few minutes ago, um, to quote you, I'm in, I'm committed, right? Um. I wanted to talk about real solutions because I listen to you all the time and I, I, I hear and I gain knowledge all the time. But Okay, well, so much uh, of this is a moral issue. They're moral, we're murderers of children. After Sandy, well, we have to go, wait a minute, you're the ones that took the guns out of the school. See, so much of it is about selling tyranny. So we said, call the state house in Illinois, stop the gun ban. We put articles out, others did. We flooded them, and they knew the villagers were coming with pitchforks, so they backed off. Same thing. We introduced bills to arm the teachers in the school, so this stops, then it actually fixes things. So you're, I mean, you're saying, what are the solutions? Abolish the private Federal Reserve. Bring the power of the Treasury, uh, of the purse, back into the Treasury. Uh, get constitutionalists elected. Uh, I mean, there's so many. Run for office yourself locally. Educate people. So much of it is just getting the word out, sir. See, they want to keep this gun grab under the radar. We're not going to let that happen. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I, I just feel helpless. I feel like we never win and we're always on the defense. So what you're saying about going on uh, the offense, you know, writing letters, suing them and all that. These, these all sound great. I just don't know how to do them. I, I've written letters to my congressman. All right, well, listen, you can sue any city you're in that's putting so-called sodium fluoride in the water. Stay there. I'll come back to you, and then I'll go to others. We have a caller asking for solutions and, and saying he doesn't know how to you know, take action. All over the world and in the U.S., there have been successful lawsuits pointing out that not only sodium fluoride is out of the water, but a bunch of other chemicals. So you do a FOIA request, you get where they're getting the fluoride, you document, you know, you, you get in, you take photos of it at the water plant with the skull and crossbones for the exhibit. Uh, you, and you have to go file this to do this. You put them on notice you're going to sue them because they're hitting you with a dangerous chemical weapon and making you pay for it. And then you just copy the lawsuits that have been successful in other uh, states and counties and you file a suit on the city. And uh, you go in city council and you talk about it during the citizens communication to draw attention to it. And then local media <coughs> will report on it. And usually there's already an activist group locally that's sick of it. You get aggressive. They're assaulting you with a chemical weapon. You assault them with a court. Courts are meant to take a, a, a caveman system of violence. When somebody's violent to you, you can only be violent back. And to go and do it through a court. But we've abandoned the courts. So there's a solution. Take our video we put up yesterday, Demand a Real Plan. It's had 64,000 views. 
It'll probably get about 300, 400,000 views at the rate it's going. In the next few days, it needs to get 10 million views. But the point is, we just churn videos out pointing out that government's the number one threat. Government's the danger. Don't turn your guns in. Then politically, people have the will to not turn their guns in. And then we say, look, I came on air and I said, I'm not turning them in. Come and get them. And it's one thing to say that to your buddy at the bar. I said it on the radio to 3 million people. Okay, that's where the real power is, is saying, you know what? You got to go through my body. I'm done playing games, okay? You're criminals. You're unconstitutional. You've committed all these crimes. Cease and desist now. And it gives moral support to the good police and military. Most of them are good men and women who know this is wrong, and they need our moral support. We need theirs. And everybody else, you've got to stand. So I hope that answers your question, Ryan. God bless you. Uh, let's talk to Ken in Pennsylvania. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, you're Alex. Hey, buddy. Um, I ran out of my Longevity products a couple weeks ago, running around from the holidays and all that. Didn't reorder in time. And uh, because of my job, I'm up and down ladders all day. I was getting soreness in my legs and my ankles. Anyway, my new package just came in like a few days ago, and it's gone. I'm, I'm back to... Back to fighting weight, fighting the, the you know. The products at InfoWarsHealth.com, this isn't a planted call. The guy's just calling in about this. The products we've assembled and put together at InfoWarsHealth.com are the best out there from our research. And the dramatic effects for Aaron Dykes, myself, and others are just amazing. Just the energy level with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, the Pollen Burst Plus, the, uh, their special proprietary blend of essential fatty acids, the hundreds of products there at InfoWarsHealth.com are amazing. And I need to do more to promote it because it also funds our operation. And that's what I do. I fund us, you know, not with Putin money, like RT. I fund ourselves with stuff I believe in and I, I use. So uh, anything else you'd like to add about the longevity products? Well, I got introduced through them for listening to your show, and I thought I'd try them and see how they did, and I was amazed. It, it, within a week, it, it's just, what a difference. Well, I tell oh, you, I, you ought to sell them. If you become a distributor, you can pay 10 bucks and get discounts, uh, and also sign up and get free shipping when you get auto ship at InfoWarsHealth.com. Uh, you really ought to, um, I mean, you've used it, you believe in it, it's good. We're, we're, we're not communist. You ought to become a distributor for InfoWarsTeam.com. Uh, you can go there and sign up to become a distributor uh, and then pay it forward. You know, you discover something that really works. Tell people your testimony and promote it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, God bless you, sir. I appreciate your call. Gerald Salente, our first visit with him in the new year. Folks are chomping at the bit to get him on, myself included. We'll talk about Sandy Hook, the economy, the police state, uh, the wars, where he sees it going. I mean, it is just crazy the zone we're entering right now. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the top trends forecaster, Gerald Salente from Kingston, New York. I'm Alex Jones in Austin Tejas. For the balance of the hour today, we are joined by Gerald Salente. We'll also continue with some of the phone callers that are already on hold because Gerald uh, can speak about any issue. He's a very well-researched, best-selling author. I uh, worked as a consultant, uh, worked in uh, political circles as well. I really needs no introduction here, trendsresearch.com. Uh, Gerald is an American trends forecaster, publisher of Trends Journal, business consultant and author who makes predictions about global financial markets and other events of historical importance. Salente has described himself as a political atheist and a citizen of the world. And he's appeared basically on everything uh, uh, under the sun. And he is uh, a uh, regular guest with us, something we really appreciate. And his quarterly trends journal and his daily and weekly trends updates are invaluable. Everyone should also support real media and real analysis and go and become subscribers and then uh, hand off the great color magazine uh, to folks that you know. It's got the great art of uh, Anthony Frieda in it. He's also got Dr. Paul Craig Roberts uh, writing with him. Roberts has pointed out recently that um, so is USA Today of all people of all outfits, that all the, the, the Israeli government didn't defend our Second Amendment and said, we don't have armed teachers. No, you shouldn't have guns. When we pay to arm the teachers in Israel, and it's on record they do, uh, the Russian media has come out and said, we should not have our guns and attack me. Uh, we've had the Chinese government come out through their media and say we shouldn't have guns and quote, there should be a war against gun owners, Piers Morgan. Uh, all this media, the BBC, Australian news, it's despicable. Uh, that all these authoritarian systems want our guns, 
And I wanted to talk to Gerald about this first because I want to get his take and his view on it. Then we'll get into his latest uh, forecasting and fine tuning because so much of what he said is coming true like clockwork. What, what he sees unfolding now in 2013 to 2014 uh, as the economy continues to deteriorate, they've announced in states all over the country federally funded local police checkpoints looking for criminals and, and gangs. And they search for guns while they're at it, legal guns. They drag you out of your car and take photos of your tattoos. That's mainstream news in Texas. Uh, we're going into a deeper level of incremental martial law. And is that happening because the hammer is about to drop financially? Uh, it, it's... All accelerating, basically, and Gerald Salente joins us to be able to speak about this. Gerald, uh, a lot's happened since you were on three or four weeks ago, my friend. Good to have you on. Oh, thanks for having me, and Happy New Year to you and everyone. You too. Uh, what is your take on the shooting there in Connecticut, very close to you, and uh, how they're publishing names of gun owners so we can be robbed uh, and so we can be demonized, how they're saying all gun owners are racist clan members. These are quotes. It looks like they really are coming after us. Yeah, they are. And, um, and it's what you said before. Matter of fact, you know, we, we, we're finishing up the winter edition of the Trends Journal and we go into all the laws and restrictions that are putting, they're putting out there to, to control us. And it is because, to use your phrase, the hammer is falling. And on the gun control issue, let's play this back. When did we first start seeing these kind of uncontrollable lunatics losing their minds in mass killings of people? I mentioned that when I was a young man, I remember this, um, this movie, a young kid actually, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. And this guy killed like, you know, four people or something in a, in a farm village in Iowa or someplace. And he was whacked out on aspirin. When you look and see when this mass murder trend began, it began with the issuance. It's all there. You could look at the data. It began with the issuance of these psychotropic drugs. And as you follow what went on in Newtown, there's very little talk, if anything, about what this kid was whacked out on. And they're saying that he was suffering from Asperger's disease or syndrome. And consequently, it is assumed that he was on psychotropic drugs. And they're keeping that sealed because in every case it keeps coming out, the shooters were on all sorts of these drugs that in the insert says causes you to kill people and kill yourself. Just like our militaries at record suicides, they give them suicide pills. I mean, what do you expect is going to happen? Not only that, when you look at the latest data coming out on how much money the military is spending on these drugs and prescription drugs. It's absurd. It's obscene. And again, you don't even have to read the label of Zoloft or Ritalin or Prozac. Just tune in to any TV station and listen to the ads from the prescription drugs that they're selling. And after they show the person romping through the fields and bluebirds flying everywhere and how great life is, and they go through what the side effects of these drugs are, you'll hear suicide come up, you know, more frequently than not. So it's not an issue of gun control. It's an issue of drug control. And it's not an issue of, you know, marijuana. It's an issue of the pharmaceutical industry that are killing the brains of the nation. And then when we look at the other issue, and I hear all these politicians come out, the Dianne Feinsteins, the not-so-Feinsteins, the Obamas, all of them, one after another, saying what we have to do to stop this cycle of violence. I got an idea. Why don't we start at the top? You want to talk about murder? Hey, you blow some people off in a school. How about wiping out entire villages? I got one for you. You want to talk about a cycle of violence? 
How about that wonderful war that you senators and you congressmen voted to send our people to, to go kill other people by the millions? You want to talk about a cycle of violence? Hey, let's wait for Tuesday. Yeah, Terror Tuesday. You know that day when Obama signs off on what drones to send over to foreign countries and kill people? Oh, and the wives and the kids around them? Just call them collateral damage. It's a culture of cruelty. Why shouldn't people do this? They'll see it coming from the top and the fish rots from the head down. And I want to mention about what happened over here with this newspaper in Rockland County, not far from us. This is beautiful. This is great. You want to talk about imbeciles and cowards? The editor of this, the publisher of that newspaper, a coward, a little slimy piece of crap publishing people's names that have guns. And why am I calling her a slimy little piece of crap? Because right here in the Turlet paper of record, newspaper that put gun permit map online hires armed guards. Check that out for hypocrisy. Oh, no, you can't arm yourself, you little weeny, disgusting individual. You need somebody to protect you. You need an armed guard. I got an armed guard for you. Check this line out. The safety of my staff is my top priority, Miss Hansen said in a telephone interview. Guess what? The safety of my staff is their own priority. If you can't stand up for your life, you don't deserve to have it. If you're going to call somebody out and start a fight. And that's what these people do. They start a fight and then they call on gods in because they don't have the courage, the dignity, and the respect to defend themselves. Gerald. I've studied a lot of history, so have you, because to know what's going to happen currently in the future, you have to know history. The hypocrisy of the so-called liberals, these are not liberals. It's not that the conservatives are good either, the mainline ones, they're authoritarians too. But this group of Obamanoids, they've all got bodyguards, they've all got concealed carries, Dianne Feinstein admits it. But then she says, Mr. and Mrs. America, this is a quote. I'm going to make you turn all your guns in. I'm sure you've seen that video. It's crazy. It's like they're going to have guns. But then say we're trash and publish where we live because they're doing this all over the country with government list of concealed carry people. I mean, and, and, and this has been done before and people get robbed and I hope they get sued for doing this because this is harassment. This is a terroristic action. I mean, I mean, what? they are the scum of the earth. They've got armed guards, Gerald, but they'll publish that you've got guns. Yeah, I know. I mean, who's, who's making this crap up an armed guard? Why can't you arm yourself? You got to hire somebody? And what, you know, what, what kind of, who made this crap up? And then they brag about it. We hired armed guards. Doesn't anybody see the disconnect They are here? pathetic, disgusting jellyfish. And again, up top, they want our guns to enslave us. But the general liberal is really a chicken neck who's never been in a, I walk on the hike and bike trail and I can tell who real liberals are. Uh, who, who love liberty, they're outgoing. But the fake liberals are literally scared chicken necks of everything. They are scared of their own shadows, and so they want us to live like disarmed slaves like they do. All right, now let's put this all into perspective to make it real at another level. Let's suppose they pass gun control. How effective is it going to be with some 300 million guns out there? Who's going to have the guns? I'll tell you how effective it's going to be. It's going to be as effective as prohibition was. I'll tell you how effective it's going to be. It's going to be as effective as the war on drugs. Who can, what are they gonna do? They're not gonna be able to control this. I'll tell you how effective it is in countries like Brazil and other places where it's almost impossible to get guns. You know who has the guns? The criminals. And they're running loose.
That's stay there, sir. Problem. You're right. Let's talk about that. That hasn't been looked at. The crime rate will explode, which is what the big city Chicago, uh, mafia wants. Gerald Salente is our guest. Uh, Gerald, I want to get back into the point you were making about crime rates exploding in Chicago, New York, everywhere they take the people's arms. I mean, it's common sense. This idea of let's don't arm the pilots. They can be trusted to fly the plane, but let's literally get a $20 an hour security guard who's had a couple of firearms classes that anybody could take, and let's have them come guard us. Or let's put federal air marshals on all the planes to spy on everybody instead of our, I mean, it's this idea that only government specialists can do it. It's all about a government monopoly, but doesn't the power structure, I wanna get back into the point you were making, but then I wanna ask you this central question. We can see where this is going. You've talked about it, you've wrote about it, history, we've seen it. Yeah, they may get half the public to want to turn the guns in and half the public to suck their thumbs and think government really cares about them and maybe the government can come and wipe their hind ends. But a lot of us, 10, 15, 20, 30 percent, know what's going on. We're not going to go along. We're done. So they can't put us all in prison. I mean, does the, the system obviously knows it's going to cause a civil war if Obama signs an executive order to try to confiscate guns. Gerald Salente. Yeah, well, yeah, they're going to try something. I, I don't believe they're going to go that far with it because I think they know that they're not going to get away with it. And we even saw in, what was it, in Illinois, they tried passing some legislation yes. I saw on your website, on, on the Prison Planet website. Yes, we shot you, it down. Following it. Yes. And, and, they didn't get it, and they didn't pass it. I, I think what they're going to do is they'll come up with some other kind of restriction and uh, it'll only go so far... They'll keep playing out this political capital for as much as they can get from it. But in the end, I don't think they're going to succeed. There will be more restrictions guaranteed. And again, the stupidity. For example, there was just a guy in Switzerland that killed three people or four people the other day. Everybody, everybody in Switzerland is allowed to have a gun. They all have guns. They're not killing each other. This has nothing to do with having the gun. It has to do with a society that's out of control, a society that's over-medicated. And again, let's stay on that issue for just a moment. Now, you've been following this closer than anybody that I know. And you're, you're looking at every piece of information coming out. What drugs was this kid on? Why do we have to hear from some police uh, superintendent or inspector or whoever say, we have the information, but we're keeping it private because we don't want you to know anything. I mean, who can make this? Why, what, what's wrong? We can't. Why don't we know? Why aren't the books open? Why can't we say what drug tipped this kid out of his mind? Hey, all of those wankers out there that have been screaming about marijuana over all the years and how it could become a gateway drug and lead to worse things. Why aren't you screaming out against all of these psychotropic drugs that they're pumping into all of these kids? And now it's getting even worse. Here's what's going on. A kid grows up in a family of which there are tens of millions in this country. His mother's whacked out on meth. He doesn't know who his father is. He's living in this drama, this, this, this situation that's hell every day. He goes to school. Oh, he becomes unruly. So what do they do? Well, there are no social programs anymore. When I was a kid, there were CYOs, there were PBA, P, uh, PALs, political, uh, police athletic leagues, there were YMCAs. You know, the kids had a place to go. If things were uneasy, you had a little support, the churches, whatever. Now you're on your own. You know what they're doing to these kids? They're feeding them drugs to calm them down. That's right. Millions and millions of kids getting drugged up by Big Pharma. Their minds are being blown. So for this, they say we need gun control. And as I said, if we're going to have gun control, start with Obama. Start with Bush. Start with Clinton. Bombs away over everybody. Kill millions. 
But take the guns away from people because they could become dangerous. Oh, but wait a minute, Gerald. Obama fake cried and, 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 and couldn't squeeze tears out and now has released another fake photo of him sad over the dead children, just like the fake Situation Room photo they had to admit. I mean, the, the milking of this, he isn't crying over the hundreds of dead Mexican kids from Fast and Furious, is he? Now, how about, how about the million people the United States killed in Iraq? How about the ongoing slaughter in Afghanistan? Just yesterday, another Predator drone killed a militant and eight other people that happened to be around them. I bet Obama cried over that. He signed the death order. We'll be right back with Gerald Salente. Here's some of the top stories at InfoWars.com. Police kicked out of... Belleville Denny's, am I pronouncing that right, for being armed, CBS News. I saw that this morning. It just blew me away. And the newscast acts like it's kind of reasonable. So the anti-gunners, the rank and file, are so scared of guns that now they're even scared with police with guns. Actually, we have that clip of the, uh, of the DEA guy shooting himself. Maybe we should play that brief clip for uh, Gerald here if we can find it. But the issue here is, if you're going to trust police with guns, you got to trust firefighters with guns. I think they should have them as backup when they get shot at sometimes during riots. You should trust the citizens with guns. You should have the pilots with guns. The answer is arm good people, okay? And that's been known throughout history. And the areas that have the highest crime are the areas where they've taken the guns. But here it is, police kicked out of Denny's for being armed. The police chief, uh, Bill Clay... And by the way, we have a police chief coming on the Sunday show um, who's calling for a Second Amendment zone. He says he's going to nullify all the federal laws. People say, well, you can't do that. Oh, really? You've got 800 plus cities that nullify the illegal alien laws that are actually constitutional. How about we nullify laws that are unconstitutional? The new orders come after a New Year's Day clash between five detectives and one Denny's manager. The department says the detectives were out of uniform but were wearing their badges when manager David Rice asked them to either leave or put their guns in the vehicle. And, of course, they argued with them but left. Rice told detectives that one of their weapons, specifically a female detective's gun, was making another uh, diner feel uncomfortable. As the uh, officers were leaving without their food, general manager Michael Van walked up and corrected the manager and said it was fine for them to stay. But officers said it would be too awkward. And I found a find this must be another article. I had another one here in my stack where the police chief called it crazy politics. I wanted his, his full quote. Uh, yeah, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, I had a carpet cleaner guy. I've told this story a hundred times. So I'm not going to keep Gerald on hold any longer, but I want his take on this. I had the carpet cleaner there, and, and um, my, my girlfriend lived with me. We got married. It's, it's my wife. Uh, very, very evil, but we were about to get married. She, she just moved in. And... Um, we're getting the house, little house, your carpet cleaned, and my studio. And there's a didn't have any kids yet. But there was a shotgun up on the, you know, up on the and a 243 and some stuff. And the guy said, "I can't clean in there." Well, and the assistant was from Texas. And he goes, "No, man, guns, the guns are legal here." The guy goes, "No, no," and he leaves. And I had to call, and they go, "Well, we've stopped him calling the police, but yes, he's not comfortable. We'll send another crew." And I'm like, "You know what? Just forget it." But this is the attitude where these people think guns come out at night and kill people. And, and here's another headline. Boston Mayor, Vice President, guaranteed gun control before Sandy Hook shooting. Leading gun control advocate, we'll get it done by the end of January. I told you, they plan with even an executive order. Uh, the head of Gunners of America says they may actually try it. Gerald Salente, what is your take on the citizens so scared now that they call the police when they see a gun in your gun rack uh, or they see a gun in your gun case, or police now are having people freak out when they've got guns. Well, it's fear and hysteria. Look what happened down in Maryland the other day. A little kid, six years old, went, you know, pow, 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 and, and they, they threw him out of school. I said, good thing the kid didn't go bang, bang, bang. They would have the SWAT teams in there shooting them. Now the country's lost its mind. I mean, look at every level it's breaking down. I mean, this whole thing of it's fear and hysteria. Look what they did with the fiscal cliff. Pick the category. How they had the people freaked out since Election Day. You know, going, I mean, it's still going on. So you have a society 
that's lost its dignity, its respect, its courage, its passion, and they're, and they, and they're, living, they're living unfulfilled lives. So when you live these unfulfilled lives and have nothing going for you, you start making life miserable, miserable for other people around you. And again, this gun issue to me is more of a prescription drug issue. And people refuse to hold on to it. And they keep avoiding the fact. And the fact is that all of these drugs make a lot of people that are already over the edge, pushing them even further. And it's well documented and well known. Well, Gerald, I want to get into the economy and some issues and then take some wild card phone calls, questions for you here. But look, in the 1980 study of Prozac, they admitted a 14 or was it 15 time increase in suicide. That's mainstream news. Uh, a decade ago, we finally forced all serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs or SRIs to put in there that it causes mania, schizophrenia, mass murder, violence, suicide. I mean, it's all in these drugs insert. And in almost every shooting, they try to suppress it, but it always comes out later they were on it. Like this time, that you know, he was under psychiatric care. Give me a break. He's on it. It says when you have Asperger's, they try to put you on. Prozac is actually the one they recommend, one of the oldest. So we know these pills do it, and then we always wonder, it's always a goth, devil worshiper, obsessed with shoot 'em up video games, who is literally taking hallucinogenic drugs, who does this. It's open and shut. It's the drugs. Why do I have to lose my guns because mommy likes to jack her kid up on a bunch of drugs instead of giving them a spanking or making them carry out the trash? I mean, why can't we have discipline for these kids? Again, you, you nailed it. And that's what I'm saying. So the, so the discussion starts to lose its focus because it keeps going into all these different areas. Again, for me, the two areas are very simple. One is drugs, and the other is a culture of cruelty. We have presidents that get out there and brag how they kill people. Hey, Obama got Osama. Hey, wasn't that great? Hillary bragged about, about Gaddafi. She goes, I came, I saw, he died. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so it's a culture of violence and it's a, and it's a culture of prescription drug addicted society. Where do you predict it's going to go? And then let's shift into your latest trends and what's really front and center in the new trends journal. Everybody's got to go to the site with all the videos and the material, trendsresearch.com. I, I stop there daily, trendsresearch.com. People can go there and subscribe and support what Gerald's doing, but really get the magazine, the, the, the journal, so you can then give it to others. This is the type of thing you want to leave at the dental office. This is the type of thing you want to pay forward. Uh, again, trends journal, ladies and gentlemen, available at trendsresearch.com or trendsjournal.com. What else do you see on the radar? What else is front and center? Our front and center war. And, and it, we're, they're leading us to it. Remember, you've heard me say this before. We're watching a parallel universe happen. The crash of 1929, the Great Depression, currency war, wars, trade wars, world war, the panic of 08, the Great Depression. There's a depression going on in a lot of countries worldwide, including here. If you're out of work and you're starving and things are terrible, it's a depression and there are a lot of people in it. Currency wars. Last year we heard Guido Montega and this year from Brazil saying there's a currency war. We just heard Mervyn King, the outgoing head of the Bank of England in New York. There's a currency war going on. Now we have a new prime minister of Japan, Abe. There's a currency war. What's the first thing he did when he got elected? He told the Bank of Japan, do what they're doing in the United States. Do what they're doing in Europe. Do what they're doing in China. Do what they're doing all over the world. Print more money. Devalue the currency because there's a war on and the war is for exports. If your currency is too strong, your manufacturers can't push product out of the country. So Japan, do like they've done in the USA. Devalue the currency so that their exporters could export more. 
stage next trade wars. They're heating up and world war. And anybody out there that doesn't believe that the United States currency has been devalued, well, take a look at gold prices from where they are now and where they were 10 years ago. So what is going on? For the, our forecast is economics, more of the same but worse. They're going to continue to print money. That's the only way that they're keeping this going. And by doing so, keeping interest rates at or near zero, which they are coming out of the Fed. So the banks are getting all the dough that they can. And then you put the other piece on top. Low interest rates, okay. The housing market's in its worst decline since the Great Depression. What's holding it up? Oh, you can get, you know, you can get a, a loan now for what? On residential, 2.77%. So now we can see how they keep, oh, and by the way, on that new fiscal cliff deal, they extended the mortgage tax deductions. So that is a $600 billion cost that helps the mortgage investment. That's right. They didn't do that to help mom and pop. They did that to help the banksters, again, who loan this out of nothing. And, and what's amazing is Obama saying no new payroll taxes. He swore it, but 77% of American workers got that tax increase, and he raised a bunch of other taxes. That's exactly right. So this keeping this mortgage deduction in there, that helps the mortgage business. That's all that was for. So, and it's guaranteed. Is, I mean, who makes this thing up? I'll be a bank. I'll loan you money to buy a house. You, you default on the loan. Okay, don't worry about the FHA, Freddie Mac, and Fannie Mae. We'll cover the bet that the bank made that they made a bad bet, and they get to take your house and then resell it. Anyway, moving back to the war, because it's all connected. When all else fails, they take you to war. And they're going to take us to war, I believe, with Syria. And that is the gateway to go into Iran. So when I talk about the first great war, do the math. There's a war in Libya. There's a war in Syria. There's a war that's heating up again, a revolution in Egypt. The Muslim Brotherhood took over, which, by the way, had nothing, nothing to do with the so-called Arab Spring. They were not on the streets. Same thing in Tunisia. After they overthrew that government, whoop, here's the Muslim Brotherhood. Oh, and by the way, take, over, take a trip over to Yemen. Not far away. A civil war going on there, corrupt government that we, the American taxpayer, are supporting. And... President Obama is sending in predator drones. Check out Bahrain, not too far. A civil war going on, but don't say anything about, bad about Bahrain because the United States has the fifth fleet there. Hey, it oh, came out that Bahrain actually pays money and others to CNN for fake reports. The whistle got blew by Amber Lyon, who's won three uh, Emmys for her news reporting. And it never even became a news issue that CNN isn't just connected to the Pentagon and PSYOPs as came out 12 years ago. They're actually foreign funded. How, of course they are. Look what's going on. What just happened with with Al Gore just selling his current TV. Who did he sell it to? Al Jazeera. Who owns Al Jazeera? Hey, it couldn't be to cut a government, could it? Qatar, you yeah. Know, and... and Wow. And, and again, what do you make of all these foreign TV stations saying um, domestically saying America needs to turn its guns in? Why are they all ganging up on us? Well, because they're controlling the people and they don't want it. They don't want the people to have any freedom. So all these slimy governments are in it together, basically. Well, again, going back to Qatar, these are the people that started. And by the way, there's a link that subscribers get. I was on China Today with the... Al Jazeera Washington bureau tree, chief prior to the Libyan war. You got to check this out. We'll put the link up there for everybody. We'll put it on YouTube on the Gerald Salenti or Trends Journal channels. 
And this is prior to the war. You want to see this easy talking guy lose it at the end. It's a comic book. What, what happened was that the Arab Little League, all of these kings, emirs, dictators by any other name, are the ones that are destabilizing the area and sending all of the arms in that are supporting these Islamist Al-Qaeda wackos that the United States, of course, began supporting under Jimmy Carter called the Mujahideen that's overthrowing these governments. So now going back to Al Gore, he just scored a hundred million bucks because his worthless current TV didn't have anybody watching it. When, you know, they had as low as, you know, 40,000 people tuning in. And by the way, that's a political payoff, having foreign governments later pay you for something that's not really worth it. That's the oldest trick in the book. I mean, this exactly. is just, um, look at Congress saying they're allowed to insider trade and then passing a law that actually lets them insider trade, claiming the law outlaws them insider trading. I mean, it is just unbelievable how much trouble we're in. But it's perfect for a piece of crap like Al Gore. He just sold us out and brought Al Jazeera in to do propaganda for us. This is the same slime ball that sold out America and sent out all our jobs overseas with NAFTA. And he's you got the young that. he's got the young turds on there uh, that show uh, young Turks calling to take our guns. It's all just a bunch of foreign traders. But I mean, again, how much will we put up with? He traded the company the country out on that debate with Ross Perot back in the early nineties. And people don't understand that Ronald Reagan couldn't put NAFTA, push, push NAFTA through because the Democrats were against it. They knew that labor would lose all its jobs. George Bush Sr. couldn't put NAFTA, push NAFTA through because the Democrats knew that it would suck out all our jobs. But as long as Al Gore and Clinton did it, it's cute. Democrats love getting destroyed as long as they feel like they're winning and their party's in. They love it. That as long as one of them destroys them, Clinton pulled off what the other ones couldn't. So Al Gore is the perfect metaphor for selling out the country, whether it's selling out our freedom to hear great programming and not be propagandized by the Qatar government that's starting wars throughout the Middle and East. And that's their perfect cutout. And of course, they're connected to British intelligence. I mean, I think it's time to really look at these foreign run TV stations domestically because they're running around trying to overthrow our republic. I mean, what do you call that when foreign governments come in? Because Al Jazeera says turn our guns in. I say Al Jazeera needs to get out of our country. I, and that's what I'm saying, that Al Gore is the same guy that sold out the country, that took our jobs overseas, and now he's grabbing some more dough. So going back to the wars. I tell you what, we got to go to break. I, we'll, we'll come right back, and I promise go to some calls here. Gerald Salente is our guest. It's just unbelievable. I hadn't even gotten to the Al Gore man bear pig nose. What a piece of trash jamming a few phone calls in this next segment and the next and i'm going into overdrive in the next hour to play some special reports and take more calls gerald salente is our guest i'm alex jones if you just tuned in I, I said i would announce two big contests today but i'm going to shoot a video that'll air on the nightly news tonight where i break down the new contest we're going to have we're going to have five thousand dollar contest we got two one thousand dollar contest i'm about to pay out on next week We've had like over 20 contests now over the years. Uh, we're going to have one that's $5,000 that I'll be announcing and another that's $100,000. And the reason I'm doing this is to get the word out and it will reach tens upon tens of millions of people with the message of liberty. Wait till you hear about these contests. It's going to be big. Um, but I've got to codify my thoughts. I haven't written up the rules yet. So I'll announce it tonight in a special video. The next week officially uh, kick it off because uh, we've got to uh, turn loose the power of the people. Um, continuing here, this is everything we're talking about. Globalism is foreign financial interests that are authoritarian coming in and buying off your government 
and then having the government give the tax money and no bid contracts to them. And then they want to secure that, so now they want our guns too and our freedom. It's just mafia. It's, it's organized crime. That's what the new world order is. And that's what we've become. And now we are such a joke that all these foreign governments are here propagandizing us and paying for CNN and paying for what's on current TV and lecturing us on all these channels that we need to give our guns up. And it's enough, okay? It's enough. Gerald, have they miscalculated here? Or will America just put up with anything? Well, you know, one of the, I, what I'd like to do is come back at a, another time shortly and go over our top trends for 2013. And one of them is the Great Awakening. You know, there was before this revolution in this country, uh, there was a, an awakening. And part of the Great Awakening was that people woke up to the idea that they should not bow to nobility, that they weren't better than the rest of the commoners. It became, it became also something where people realized that their salvation was dependent upon their actions, on how they behaved, what they did, and how they would bring themselves up to the highest level to be the best human beings they could be. A lot of, by the way, Thomas Paine's work is written in the context of the Great Awakening. And there was a religious element to it as well. But forgetting the religious element, I believe we're going to answer your question, we're going to have another Great Awakening. The nobility have become this red carpet crowd. They never show up without a red carpet. Do you know how sick and tired I am of watching Hillary Clinton or somebody, the president, waving from, you know, their jumbo jets? Who are they waving to? A bunch of prostitutes down below? A bunch of flacky, flunky aides? But yet you see these pictures. No, they're behaving like royalty. It's all, they're saying, I'm God, you're nothing. And by the way, I'm going to take your guns. And by the way, I'm going to take $85 billion a month and put it in my pocket. And if you don't like it, a SWAT team's going to drop by. Exactly. So now the people are going to start rebelling against the royalty. All of the, sh the charade is down. How could any self-respecting human being listen to a McConnell or a Reed or a Pelosi or a Bonner or an Obama or a Laurel and Hardy? That's all it is and everyone knows it. The, the charade is, is, is coming very clear to many. And then when you go overseas, it's no different. The Great Awakening is beginning to happen. You have a guy like this Rajoy over there in Spain, or Merkel, or, or Three Card Monty, who just uh, stepped down in, in Italy. And one after another, when do these people, Hollande or Cameron, when Hold do on, they Gerald, stay there. We're going to take a couple calls. All right, let's jam in a few quick calls for Gerald Salente. Uh, I want to invite him back because I want to get his trends uh, for the new year uh, next week if he wants. So the week after that, whenever Gerald wants, uh, he's on. I always love listening to him. So do our listeners. Great information. Really points out the hypocrisy and accurately predicts what's going to come in the future. And I agree with him. People finding their dignity. Everything the globalists do is about dominating us, breaking our will like a pimp does to a, to a, to, you know, to a woman he's dr drug off into slavery. And we have got to stop letting government dominate us. It's doing it everywhere because it knows what it's doing. Uh, let's go uh, to uh, George in Connecticut. No, no, no. George is at first. John in Wyoming on Feinstein, listening on WWCR. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Alex, and thank you for having your great guest, Gerald Salente, on today. You bet. Uh, I had something happen yesterday that both of you will enjoy. I called Diane Feinstein's office in Washington, D.C., and one of her young male staffers answered the phone. I said, as per the uh, gun control measure Ms. Feinstein is introducing today, I said, please give her my congratulations. I had no idea she was a supporter of the Fuhrer. I said, Adolf Hitler did the same thing to his people in 1934, and then we saw what he did to his people after he disarmed them. So I just wanted to give her a very hearty congratulations for following her, her guide, uh, the Fuhrer. And I said, by the way, if you think that anyone uh, but uh, 
you know, is going to be uh, obeying your gun control edicts, uh, ask her how many murderers, rapists, armed robbers, drug dealers, or gangbangers are going to turn in their firearms. I said the answer is like her credibility, zero. I said we saw how well the alcohol prohibition worked. We saw how well the drug prohibition has worked. And now you expect different results with the gun prohibition? I said criminals don't obey And gun what laws. did the uh, creature on the other end of the line say? He started hollering, what zip code are you calling in from? I said, never mind that. I said, I'm not a constituent, but since she introduced this legislation, I thought I would call up. Oh, yeah, they'll also her. imply that if you're not in their state, she's trying to take our rights nationwide. Shut up, Feinstein. You represent everybody. That's the stuff they pull as well. Uh -huh. you, you need to call her and let her know. Thanks for waking everybody up, you Boy. pig witch. I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Gerald. Oh, bravo. That was perfect. What he said was perfect. You know, not a word minced and not a word wasted. And, and by the way, on the Feinstein issue, I was just talking about Al Gore before and the deal that they made, you know, to get their station on all their worthless, their worthless current TV on all these cable companies that would never normally carry it. But because of his connections, do you know one of the investors in there? Diane Feinstein's husband. Uh, Isn't that a big who, who gets banker bailout money and all the insider trading stuff that, yeah. uh, that mommy's involved in. But she got the, the Senate Ethics Committee to tell her it was okay. So the news said, oh, she's allowed to insider trade, but you go to jail if you do. But she's yeah. better than us. She walks on red carpets. Exactly. And again, that goes back to the Great Awakening. But that caller, that was perfect what he said because it covered all the points perfectly yeah they, like you said they're the gangbangers all these the rapists the, the robbers they're, they're going to give up their guns hey gerald no. i want to tell people right now because you've got to leave us i know you just offered to come on and break down your trends that we don't have time to get to is your book there can i tell folks now when you're going to be on for an hour next week uh i don't know the exact date but uh, uh but i <laughs> will get it to you later on today okay but just sometime next week you will grace us with your presence i promise sometime next week we'll make the time to be on if i have a red carpet for you but uh, then it could be tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> no no listen i was joking i'm gonna start having bling and like red carpets maybe all the yeah uh, no, all i want a red carpet when i show up you know <laughs> no and it's true because every time you see these these dictators We'll call them presidents or prime ministers. They always have some flunky over there dressed up in a costume, you know? And they're all lined up and they're saluting. Who made this crap up? Who's paying for this? Get these guys to work. They're very oh, embarrassing. Gerald, thank you so much. More calls and news, special reports coming up. There goes Gerald Salente. If you go to Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com, we have different articles up there with the video in it titled Demand a Real Plan, documenting that government has been the biggest murderer in history in the last century, killed over 290 million. I kept saying 260 million, my memory failed. It was 290 plus million from the university studies that we uh, show uh, in the Demand a Real Plan five minute uh, breakdown. And then under the YouTube video, we have links to the university studies and also comparable information compiled by Jews, for the preservation of firearms ownership. And again, I want to thank you for joining us. We are live. It is the fourth day of January 2013. 2013. Man, wow, here we are. Time is a flying. How fast will this year go by? Now, I, I went into overdrive so we could take some more of your phone calls and get to some of these special reports because these are the type of reports that are being filed daily on the nightly news, 7 o'clock central. By the way, you get 11 memberships for $5.95 a month. So you can go create one membership, username, passcode, share it with 10 more people who can simultaneously use it. Incredible films, the nightly news, so much more, prisonplanet.tv, and the tiny bit of money we make helps fund this operation. So if you're not a member, uh, join us with Operation Awaken the Sleeping Giant. And, and, and again, I'm going to launch Operation Paul Revere. I'm going to shoot a video about it today that will be on the nightly news. And we'll have official rules next week. I've just got to, this is so much money, $100,000 in the, in the prize that I've got to, uh, I'm just going to have a lawyer double check it because I want to you know, be sure people can be litigious out there. We always pay out on our prizes, but I want to make sure people understand that you're, you're going to have to officially enter with us and officially have a you know contest form you sign up with. This isn't going to be just all over the map. Uh, $100,000 prize and, and then the chance to have us put out your next film.
with a, I got to look at the budget, but we're looking at like a half million dollars for production and promotion. And I know how to put films in theaters. I've never done it. I'm just too busy to make films. I am planning to make one this year. We're going to try to put it in some theaters, but that, that, that takes a lot of work for anybody. You got to go on tour. You got to show it. You got to do it. So we're here uh, to, the contest is 100000 for a film you make. Then you just get $100,000. And then uh, we'll uh, also, if it fits all the criteria, you know, put it out and sell it. Uh, but I've got to develop all those final parts of the plan. But then you get in the running from the top you know, people in the contest to, we're probably going to get three or four different people at the top and come in and make a bunch of films and try to finance them. That's why it's important to buy the books, the videos, the ProPure water filters, the support our sponsors to become PrisonPlanet.tv members because we take that money and put it back into getting the word out. I mean, I, I, I'm up here saying I'm not turning my guns in no matter what. I mean, I, I'm willing to, you know, have the globalists come after me and kill me, put me in prison for this, folks. So, I mean, I'm doing whatever I think will devastate the enemy. I mean, we are here to dominate the globalists. We're not here for status. We're not here for uh, uh, you know power trips. We're not here for all the normal you know worldly stuff. We are here to savagely defend liberty with the First Amendment, savagely and viciously with no apologies, and with any means legally necessary ahead of civil war. We're trying to stop that. And so we want to turn your creative power loose. Look at how we did a contest for reporters, 5,000 for a female, 5,000 for a male, hired three or four other reporters that were in the running, got them here, the great job they're doing. Well, the next contest is 100,000, okay? All right, I'm already starting to get into this. And, and again, I'm just so busy, you know, up here late every night doing news reports and stuff, I haven't codified the whole rules yet, and but I've thought it out, and so I'll make a video about the generalities, and then I'll uh, absolutely get the rules out by like next Wednesday. You know, we worked over the holidays, too. You know, we were here New Year's, day before New Year's, all that day after Christmas, whatever. We're not playing games, okay? And because we understand this is real. And the prize we want is liberty. Our blood, our name, our treasure, it's all on the line. Everything. Now, I want to go to David Knight's report. You just heard Gerald Salente talking about how this, this great turning is coming, this great awakening historically in a cycle. And... It's not just one theory that proves this. There's actually dozens, but one book that came out in the 80s um, breaks down the fourth turning, and he's got a clip from the 90s where they predict the implosion of the market, how it would happen, what would come out of it, the tyranny, the awakening, the cycles. And there's different ways to interpret the cycles, but they're definitely there. And the globalists know their cycles. Brzezinski writes about it. So we're going to play this, then go to your calls. We're going to the bottom of the hour here at least that long in overdrive, then back into... Uh, retransmission at the bottom of the hour when Larry Pratt joined us. Very important intel. Uh, let's go to uh, David Knight, our reporter and researcher's report, the fourth turning. Uh, full video for radio listeners posted at prisonplanet.tv right now. I'm David Knight with the Nightly News. Now, this quote was written nine years before the financial crisis of 2008. But it came from a book that was written in 1990, had the same ideas from the same authors, 18 years before the financial crisis. The fourth turning is due to begin shortly after the new millennium, midway through the double O decade. About the year 2005, a sudden spark will catalyze a crisis mood. Remnants of the old social order will disintegrate. Political and economic trust will implode. Real hardship will beset the land with severe distress that could involve questions of class, race, nation, and empire. The very survival of the nation will feel at stake. Sometime before the year 2025, America will pass through a great gate in history, commensurate with the American Revolution, Civil War, and twin emergencies of the Great Depression and World War II. The basis of this prediction is a cyclical view of history that Strauss and Howe discovered by going back through American and English history back to the mid-1400s. And they discovered that just as we have seasons of weather, we have seasons of society. And just as we don't know the exact date that winter is going to come, or whether it's going to be a harsh or a mild winter, we do know that it's going to follow fall, and we do know the approximate time that it's going to come. We take a close look at the rhythms of American history, and in our book we make the following big prediction, that beginning about 10 years from now, America is due to enter an era of crisis, an era of political and social upheaval that will last uh, around 20 years or so until the late 2020s. Uh, we call this era a fourth turning. And we think it's going to be a big threshold for the history of our nation. It's going to be something on par with 
World War II and the Great Depression or going back the length of a human lifespan before then, the Civil War, or the, going back the length of another human lifespan, uh, the American Revolution. It could be a time of tragedy or, or a time of great opportunity. What they found was that societies will go through four phases of high, awakening, unraveling, and crisis. Humans go through four phases of life, childhood, young adult, midlife, and elderhood. And they notice generations where people have shared experiences and attitudes are spaced about 20 years apart. And generations are shaped by where their childhood falls within the phases of society. Now this got my attention because I noticed that there was a repeating pattern of about 72 years between significant dates in American history as well as some other histories. For example, if you go from the time the U.S. Constitution was written in 1789 to the beginning of the Civil War, 1861, that's 72 years. Another 72 years takes us to 1933, the beginning of the New Deal, another major transformation of American society. If you go another 72 years, that took us to about 2005 exactly where Strauss and Howe had predicted a major crisis and change would occur. And in addition, if you look at the Russian Revolution, from 1917 to 1989 was about 72 years. So it seemed to fit with the life cycle of humans. In a cycle, four generations, 20 years apart, are shaped by when their childhood falls within that cycle. And the names they use in their book, The Fourth Turning, come from the biblical account of Exodus. For example, you have one generation as a prophet generation. Now think of Moses calling a generation to change, the next generation, the nomad generation, wandering in the wilderness, a period of crisis and restlessness. The following generation would be a hero generation. Think of the Joshua generation taking a promised land. That often involves a major war. And then finally, an artist generation, the generation that builds a new society. Well, where does Strauss and Howe think that we are in this cycle? The researchers see the millennial generation, those born between 1982 to 2004, as the hero generation. And they see our society entering a fourth turning, a crisis period where society will be fundamentally transformed as it was with the American Revolution, the Civil War, or the New Deal. And the last time we faced a fourth turning was the Great Depression and World War II. Strauss and Howe's predictions of 22 years ago now look prescient. And we can see the storm surge coming in our society at our time, just as if a hurricane was approaching the shore. Now our government has been undermining the foundations of liberty for a long time. And the question is, will you be a sandbag to help hold up and protect liberty, or will you stand by as it gets swept away and we enter a new dark age of authoritarianism? I'm David Knight for the InfoWars Nightly News. Excellent job, David Knight. We're gonna skip this network break and take phone calls here. Um, again, a lot of other special reports right now being filed every couple hours at prisonplanet.tv as we fight the construction of the prison planet. So we have to recognize what's bad to then enter the new. We've studied history. People say, what's the solution? Recognize evil and then stand against it. What allows evil to take over? Laying down. You want solution? Stop kissing government rumpus. The government is now run by evil. Does it mean every representative of it is an evil person? No, but they are forces of Mordor. We've been taken. America's run by foreign banks. Wake up to that, restore the republic. Don't wake up, no hope. Very simple. You give aid and comfort to the foreign occupation forces when you sit there and make excuses for it or think anything it's doing is reasonable or nice. It's all about controlling you. Georgia and Connecticut contest for gun control, he has some comments on that. Go ahead and thanks for holding, sir. Uh, good speaking to you. Um, I uh, think this whole thing is basically engineered because they are trying to, uh, because of the financial collapse, I mean, uh, so they can basically get the little gangs that can basically come into our communities once we're uh, gun-free uh, gun and uh, able to be victimized so that we have to run to these big gangsters, Mr. Big, uh, for the collapse. No, no, that's but it. I Ab no, absolutely. They admit that's the plan, yeah. So I mean, uh, I mean, most people got to be. Uh, we've got to raise the awareness of everybody, and I th I'm glad you're having a contest. But I think we should also have uh, something like uh, why why not get uh, say the, the Sandy Hook uh, or Sandy uh, is it Sandy Hook? Not forget Sandy uh, Sandy Hook. Whatever, where the, where the shooting was done in, in Connecticut, uh, have them be brought together with people from Wa uh, from uh, survivors from Waco and, and Ruby Ridge and people like that, and, and the people who have survived. Uh, shootings like in, where they had guns and say, look, 
this is where sure. well that's why they've got they let the media harass them then the police take over and won't let anybody get near the families so they can control the narrative that's problem reaction solution but here's the deal we're going to have a five thousand dollar one month contest to do this quickly five thousand dollars one winner that'll be announced tonight as well and people can start going right now but it doesn't matter everybody wins putting out a uh, video demand a plan video that basically defends the Second Amendment along the lines of the video we put out. It can be anything you want, any style, anything. A five thousand dollar contest for the Second Amendment. Then we're going to have a hundred thousand dollar contest where you can make any film on any liberty issue you want, one minute, two hours, whatever, fiction, nonfiction, and then I will judge as the sole judge, uh, you know who the winner is, and then. Out of that, you'll get hundreds of great films made. Everybody wins by getting the word out, fighting tyranny uh, and, and creativity. Somebody else gets $100,000, and then I take the top five or six people, uh, and, you know, the top person, because the winner won't necessarily get the film deal. You know, we have to work that out. But, it, you know, we're going to try to put out a bunch of different films of different budgets, depending on whatever we, how much money we have. But we're, we're planning to just launch everything at the enemy. We've got our platform ready now, and we're just going to have a major offensive. And it doesn't mean that our offensive will win, but we will inspire others to have offensives. I mean, you know, just like this guy this last week who put out a video showing all these Hollywood stars shooting people in movies, cut between saying, turn our guns in. That's been all over TV, everywhere. It's totally destroying the enemy. And it's just another punch. We're going to fire and fire and fire and fire and fire and fire. Anything else, sir? Yeah, I, I thought we should also put poison pills in every one of their bills. How about uh, adding on to each one of these uh, gun bills that they're trying to put in there that they have to repeal, uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, the N N uh, NDAA? NDAA, yeah, uh, and, and, or, or abolish the Federal Reserve. Or that all federal buildings have to be gun-free and they can't have bodyguards. Disarm the Secret Service. And they'll go, well, that's ridiculous. Exactly. Leave our guns alone, filth. You've already sucked the country dry. We know you, we know you hate us. You're not getting our guns. We know you're criminals. Shut up. Shut up. The game's over. Shut up, Ceausescu. Shut up, Stalin. Shut up, New World Order. Shut up, Queen of England. Shut up, Al Jazeera. Shut up, RT. Shut up, Chinese government. Shut up. Shut up. We're not putting up with it anymore. I appreciate your call. Shut up, scum. Let's go ahead and talk to Julio in Illinois. Thanks for holding her on the air. Uh, Happy New Year, Alex, and everyone uh, listening. Uh, I was planning on heading out to your neck of the woods this weekend out in Austin. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'll be able to do so, but there's a major conference. The American Meteorological Society is having a conference beginning Sunday through Thursday. I'm glad you raised this. I told them months ago I want to send reporters, and the problem is we forget. Yes, I want... I, I, our reporters work like seven days a week by choosing because they love liberty so much. Somebody needs to go to the weather modification conference because RT came out yesterday and said, we're making it up. There's no weather mod. They're not spraying anything. Did you know that, Julio? The Russians said, shut up. So shut I up. Sorry. I saw that video this I know, no worries, Alex. Uh, I saw that video this morning, and I've been planning uh, research for the last couple of months in preparation for this conference. And there's going to be people from various universities throughout the country, as well as conference doesn't exist. There's no NAFTA highway. They're not coming for our guns. We're just we're bad people. We shouldn't be upset, Julio. We should just trust our government and turn everything over to them. And of course, we need to go to government facilities and work and labor together. Together, aren't you for the people? Don't you want to prove you're for America and go work in a forced labor camp, Julio? I mean, the Army Manual says they're setting them up. I mean, what's wrong with a FEMA camp? What's wrong with, quote, re-education centers? We shouldn't be upset about that, Julio. Are you ready to apologize? Uh, I am apologizing, Alex. I actually remember I called your show back in November of 2011, I think during the Cancun conference, the, the UN climate change conference in Cancun, and they admit that they want to move us into mass uh, camps in large urban areas. No, no, no that's They're in the official document. But no, the UN doesn't exist either. You're a conspiracy theorist. No, none of it exists. They're good people. I appreciate your call. How? Dare you say government doesn't do anything but good. When the government goes and gets on the toilet, flowers come out, okay? And if you say anything else, you're, you're a terrorist. I think it's normal to put gun owners' names in the paper and, and tell people where to go rob them and say they're scum and say that all gun owners are Klan members. Obviously, that's true.
<laughs> I mean, the government is good. <laughs> Patty in Wyoming, how are you doing, ma'am? Hi, Alex. How are you? God bless you. And, you know, God is calling out his army, and we all need to pray for each other. And um, I really enjoyed the commentary with uh, you and Gerald. Um, it was very informative and a real privilege to listen to uh, such brilliant men. Ma'am, you know where roses come from, right? I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that's okay. Listen, I just wanted to reiterate and agree with what Daryl said earlier about psychotropic drugs. I'm a registered nurse, and uh, I actually experience that weekly uh, in my profession, the, the uh, inappropriate um, prescribing of these medications, the over-prescribing of these medications, and especially, most criminally, uh, prescribing these medications to children. And yeah, I've, I've been reading where they're giving antipsychotics to three-year-olds now. What's wrong with that? I mean, that's good. Or next you're going to say it wasn't good to shoot 15,000 black people up with live syphilis? Yeah, it's, it's criminal. It's a, it's no, you're criminal, criminal for not liking it. The government did it. And the government injects black people to kill them. It's good. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah, what, I you don't, what are you, a fear monger? You don't trust the government? I no, I guess I am. I'm, I'm just, you know, a V, a V uh, vendetta, mask wearing, uh, radical nut who needs to go to re-education camp. Ma'am, I agree with you. you know, Eco science says they've been poisoning our water, and I think it's good. Of course, we need to be poisoned by the government. The government's poisoning us. It's good. For us, the truth. You know, it's it's very biblical. The truth has become the lie, and the lie has become the truth in the end times. And I really believe that. That's but, right. Um, and Diane Feinstein wants our guns because she cares about us. Thank you, extremist. That lady was so extreme. ABC Angel, um, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, Alex, this is Archangel in Pittsburgh. Oh, go ahead. Hey, I was just had a long talk with Mark Kessler, who's the Gilberton chief of police. And we had a long talk. And by the way, you neglected his direct no phone number, his 570. Hold on, let's not give the police chief's number out. Said it would be fine. But no, no, let's was, not. Let's. We got millions of listeners, bro. You're talking about the police chief that's saying he's going to have a pro Second Amendment zone in his town. Yeah. He, uh, he's he on was, the show Sunday. I didn't want to announce it because I like surprises, but he's on the show Sunday, right? Yeah, he's, he's, he's already was set up. Really happy. We had a long discussion about it. I told him about my ideas. He said he had sent it out to other mayors. I had said about the legislature and the Senate, the governor, Tom Corbett. I also mentioned that in the 70s or 80s years, they made the uh, militia, the, the, the legal militia, illegal. So they give this bill... Sir, that police chief does not exist, and uh, this phone call does not exist, uh, and Piers Morgan cares about you and your family. Pennsylvania House and Senate reinstate the legal militia, that will give the bill teeth because there's over 2 million hunters and sportsmen registered just to hunt. In I agree. We need more police chiefs to come out and say, we are going to defend the Constitution and Bill of Rights, and we need the states to defend our borders. It's time to understand we have an occupied government. And this has happened dozens of times in modern history, like Romania and places, where everybody just stops complying. Okay, and police, you name it, they can't get you all. I know they persecute police that aren't oppressive in most areas. You've got to just get together and start saying no, because there's no future. The globalists will steal everything if we don't stand up against them right now. Let's go to Ron in New York real fast. Uh, Ron, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Alex. Alex, a few things. How come there's been no real consequential journalistic vetting of Adam Lanza's mother. I mean, after all, according to the press, she played a central part. In that no, listen, the whole thing, the if you ask me, my gut tells me it's all staged, and, Bat and the Batman shooting, too, and we've got the proof, but uh, it's just, I don't know if the public can handle it. I mean, uh, the entire thing is scripted, yes. Second question is, why is the mayor of New York City, the mayor of a city, having a, quote, secret meeting with the former representative Gabrielle Giffords and her husband, Mark, uh, as though he's sending her out on some secret mission they won't discuss. And an interesting thing about her husband, Mark, back in the 90s, the man was nothing more than a naval aviator. Nothing more than a naval avi aviator, and I can't see the connection. He was part of a uh, trade, uh, some kind of a trade group that went to the People's Republic of China, government-sanctioned trade oh, yeah, group. Uh, absolutely. Which God bless you, brother. We're out of time. We're on the march.